Oh my goodness. Uh, Platy, I need you to redistribute or reallocate funding. You're on the list. I don't think Michael's on the list. Nope, Michael is not on the list. Redistribute! Same thing I just said. Where's my controller? I also, this is funny, one of the other things I got uh, set up, so for the hell of it, for kind of a backup safety option, considering how long I intend this show to keep being feasible, and how unlikely it is that PS3 games are going to take anything less than like a year and a half to get funded, I decided to buy a wired PS3 controller. Naturally, this involves buying a second hand, because Sony never produced any that I'm aware of, and even if they did, they don't produce any anymore, right? So I get a wired controller. I hook it up, and everything's great except for the fact that the down button doesn't work at all. So I couldn't hit down. I want you to think about that for a second. <laughs> God. Uh, this is one of the reasons I tend to avoid, uh, you know, custom controllers whenever I can, because... Because of crap like that. Not exactly the first time I've had that issue. LTTP? Oh, I don't know. I don't think either LTTP run is funded, no. Yeah, sorry, Kira White Noise, you're good. I didn't, at least I don't remember your name being on the list. Uh, I got... No, I haven't been able to buy Chrono Cross because the PSN is still being stupid. I... I need to figure out how to get a hold of Wild Arms 3 and Jack 3, and I still need to figure that out. But I can buy that, but I wasn't able to. And then Platy is going towards Empire of Sin. Audits. <laughs> Necessary. A little, uh, little time consuming. It's okay, we have a super chill game to stream for this, so it, it doesn't bother me all that much. <laughs> It probably bothers everyone watching this. I do apologize. Uh, hello, Narset. Hello, Vanity. Good fortune all. Let's get back to Pokemon. Uh, that button. Oh. What am I doing? Right. I don't know where I'm at. It's okay. I didn't get to rest during my break either. That sucks, Carol. What noise? Um. I'm sorry, Michael. Put what to uh to Skyward? Hey, Sonoshi. Yeah. So you supported. Oh, where is it? Looks like Civilization Two, and that's it. Looks like you put one sub towards it. So that needs to be reallocated. Shadowlands, Shadowlands. Yeah, you got it. it. Took me a second. What the heck is Shadowlands? Hang on. Uh, no, Michael, you are not one of the people who needs to reallocate. That's that's what I was saying. I apologize. I shouldn't have said anything at all. <laughs> My bad. No, it's Platy. I have a list of people that I'm staring at, and I'm trying to get a hold of them as they poke it, poke it, because, you know, people come in and go and come and go, and so I'm trying to make sure to keep track of that. And it's a big list. It's like 30-ish, 20-ish people. It's a decent chunk. You know how I am with names. Some of these people I'm pretty sure I am not going to be able to get a hold of. And the biggest one is Russ. I need to get a hold of Russ at some point, and that's gonna suck because I never see Russ except when they're donating. I may just straight up refund Russ through PayPal. It's actually what I'm thinking about doing.
Now here's hoping we can actually get some progress on this game today. I feel like we've gone nowhere. And granted, again, this is kind of a chill run, and we've been kind of taking our time, but we keep getting distracted with donations and reallocations and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, in some of these cases I'm going to have to, because in some of these cases I literally can't refund them without them manually giving them giving me refund info. Like, for example, if someone put a sub towards something, I don't get an option to refund that. Not, not without you being like, yeah, here's my PayPal info. And then me, you know, sending you money through PayPal. That's, that's the refund at that point. In some of these cases, I, I know that these are direct donations, and I actually could identify who they are on PayPal and just refund it directly. You know, they don't have to give me anything, because I can reverse engineer who they are. But... Hello, Space Cadet. Hello, Pogity. I don't think either of you are on the list. Double checking. Nope. Good. Hello, the Blackout. Hello, Pika. Hello, Ranger. Wait a minute. Hello, the one. I wish I looked that good in a vest and hat, I'm just saying. So you want to hear something ironic? Other than the one cheering bits, which is very ironic. I don't know why you'd ever do that. Um, so for lunch, uh, I, heated, uh, I had a homemade pizza, heated together, everything's cool. Got a little bit, no I didn't Zach Taft, of a... Got a little bit of grease on my shirt. Now, I know how to clean that, and I got it cleaned and ready to go, but, I mean, obviously it's going to have to dry out. So I go through all the process of, you know, undressing, which, which you know, coat, shirt, tie, clip, and then right back up to shirt, coat, tie, clip. Not in that order. And then I realized that the camera's not even on today. <laughs> There's no reason. I could be sitting here in my PJs. You wouldn't even know. You would never know. Thank you, Zuan, very, very much for those bits. As ever and as always, I do appreciate it. Do you know where you want to put those bits? Hopefully towards something I don't have to axe later. Yeah, I know. There's not a lot I can do about that. I mean, the act... It's I keep joking that Von Falkenstein wanted the, to get rid of my face, but the truth of it is more like Von Falkenstein just, you know, wanted the lower screen on. And there's no good option there because of the size of the thing. Oh my god. Blue Wolf Alex is about to loose this frickin' thing. Yeah, fine. Better deal with this. Thief one. You got it. I hope... Issues with that one down the line. <sighs> and thank you, the Blackout. Thank you very much. Always appreciate those subs. I'll put that towards Modern Warfare. I mean, if I really had to, I can I can just do this. I can prove that I'm still here in full uniform. But you know, oh my God, evasion can go to hell. I'm gonna die to this emolga because I can't hit it. Jesus. Oscar, deal with this. Or fail to hit it and then get paralyzed. And then fail to hit it. That's two misses. That's, I think that's actually up to five misses in a row at this point. There. Die. Just die. Stop wasting my time. You are such a waste of everything. I'm pretty sure 
When you were born, your parents said, Ah, we probably shouldn't even bother. And left you in the streets where you belong. That's why she became a ranger. Uh, no. Veto, nerd picks. Sorry. No, I mean die. just suddenly a pile of ash where they used to be. I mean, Emolga is amazing, and I totally want one. There's nothing I like more than irritating people for no benefit to myself, because I'm an idiot. I cancelled the sub, because I totally have the power to do that. Actually, there may be an option somewhere, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> it's called banning. Does that even work? Like, does that kill a sub if you ban someone who's sub? I don't want to test that. So don't, don't ask. Yeah, I will admit, I have a... Let's call it a preference towards Pokémon that have an evolution. Because if a Pokémon doesn't have an evolution, I'm just kind of... Eh, you know. Now, there are some exceptions, but... You know, most of those are high-ups or pseudo-legendaries or whatever. Or actual legendaries. I mean, it's, it's just, it's a little mouse thing, and it never becomes another mouse thing. You see, now, now I'm challenging myself to think of Pokémon that don't have evolutions that I like. Actually, there's probably a list of Bulbapedia. Let's, let's, let's find it. Here we go. Evol Pokemon that do not have an evolution. What do we got? What do we got? I mean, there's a couple of decent ones here, you know? Like Kangaskhan, Tauros, Le Lepros, Aerodactyl, some legendaries. Dunsparce, that's where it's at. That's just the best. Actually, Heracross is legitimately pretty decent. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've used Heracross in a fighting gym challenge before. Mill tank, we all know what she can do. Secondaries. Mawile apparently does not have a chain. Well, there you go. There's a, not only a Pokemon, but it's actually one of my favorites. And it is my favorite Steel type. That does not have a chain. So there you go, Mawile. Came up with one. Nah, I don't think it's worth it, Mr. Red. Also, I can't get Dunsparce in this particular game at this particular time. I, mean, I could probably cheat one in, but you know. I like Pachirisu, but that's more for cute fact than anything else. I legally own this game, the one. Which I can prove, legally. All that matters. Oh yeah, Victini. I've used Victini as a main. I don't understand the question, Pulp and Sweater, I'm sorry.
Ice Tray, quick! Where do you want to redirect the sub towards? Quick, quick, no, and Ice Tray's gone. I lost him. There are a lot of non-evolving po- Oh, Mimikyu! There you go, Mimikyu's a good one. Not a- uh, I'm sorry, there's a lot of non-evolving Pokémon in Gen 7. Probably because of all the uh, outer beasts or whatever they're called. Bunch of those, geez the ways. Oh, Fables, you got it, Ice Tray. Thank you very much, as always, for the sub. Much appreciate. And I will redirect your previous donation towards. I do. The game that got axed was either Civ 2 or Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1. Sorry, I've already removed you from it, because, but it's one of those two. This is the one that got axed that you were donated towards specifically. The list of axed games may grow. I may be adding um, Wild Arms 3 and Jack 3 to that list. I'm still looking into that, though. That is color coordination right there. Why Civ 2? So... The, the short answer is, I can't get it into streamable format. That's the short answer. The usual problem. The long answer would take much longer to go through. I, I don't think there is loner. No, I think near automata is pronounced exactly correctly. Or excuse me, spelled exactly correctly. It's a big tomato type game, you know. It's also a stealth bun if you think about it. But most people wouldn't get to that. So loner, you have two uh, dollars to reallocate or be refunded. So if you would like to do so, please do so as quickly as you possibly can. Let's try it. Let's see what Bregman can do here. And thank you again, Zawan. I'm pretty sure I got Thief into streamable format. Space Marine? Sure, we can do that. I think we're gonna have to use a fan patch with this Thief 1, because I'm pretty sure I already looked into it. It's the same problem with Fallout 2. But I'm pretty sure we got that working. I am not 100% sure. Because I have I did that when someone suggested it, and that's months ago. Rumor isn't that good. Space Marine. Move Loner from the list. Thank you, Loner. Tadpoles do you have, lady? Why do you have so many tadpoles? No, I, I got it. So what? Thank you again. Uh, 
much obliged. Ah, as always, thank you. Yeah, apparently the whole world is just time poles all the way down. I don't know. No, Nerdpick, someone else, or maybe you, did it for me, but I'm caught up on the summarization. Thank you. Someone did it, I don't remember who. I say log, since I do have that up right now. It was you! Sadly, I've never even, like, I think I've heard of that game, Pika, but I couldn't tell you what type of game it is, so I've kind of never heard of that game. So I, I don't know. Well, there's the Falcon, and then there's the Winter Soldier. And we're not spoiling a, a show that is currently going live on camera. But yes, I do know that they exist. Ugh, we're never gonna evolve. haven't seen WandaVision. And I wouldn't dream of spoiling such a thing on stream. Hit hit! But I've heard good things about it. Oh yeah, Kira White Noise, I'm totally stealing your Sela idea, by the way. Oh my god, I'm sick of the rumors, Zawan. Jesus Christ. I cannot be the only one who's tired of that. Because, now granted, I check news every day because it's part of my job, right? I'm trying to... What is that? I'm trying to, uh keep up to date on events and all that, but literally every day for weeks now, some other site has been like, hey, there's totally gonna be a Switch Pro. It's gonna have this and this and that, and that, and this, and that, and this other thing, and I'm like, really? I mean, even if it's true, chill. And that's my thoughts, the one. Nintendo hasn't even hinted at anything, which just makes it even more aggravating. Yeah, hang on, we're having a slow news day. Let's come up with some rumors about this Switch. Yep, and we're gonna have a second Skyrim on the Switch. Because... Look, do we need a reason at this point? Do we? Really? We can just do whatever we want. We're gonna release Skyrim on the Steam again. It's not a different edition. We're just gonna have a separate store page for Skyrim because we can. <laughs> Hell, I'll take Oblivion for Switch. I I would buy that, and I would play that. 
uh, let's see, I think I own three Joy-Cons. One of them came with the Switch, though, so I've only bought two. <laughs> Go to the microwave. How long would you like to cook it for? Well, the food only takes 30 seconds, but I kind of need that extra experience, so we'll cook it for 40 seconds. Imagine the lawsuits. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not doing seasonal research for you. I mean, they have teleporters and energy transmission of items and people. I, I, I'd call that pretty advanced. Like, I, I can just stop there, because honestly, that's that says all it needs to. Very unlikely, Pika. Hell, at this point, I'm not even sure Starfield is ever coming out. And if it is, it'll probably be crap. trying to catch it. Oh my god, look at this encounter rate. Have I jotted down the encounter rate negative yet? Carablast, I don't know what you are. Do I care about you? That looks like a no. Yeah, I don't care. Alright, cool. Care gone. I mean, there are other games that have more dialogue than Morrowind in terms of, of Reliance Recorded Aryan, but yes, that is something that would be a major expenditure, no question. Don't mistake me, a proper remake of Morrowind would be a lot of time and money, but I still want it. <laughs> if I wanted a cheap and dirty remaster, then, well, then that's cheap and dirty. Oh yeah, I was gonna look up Route 6. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Anything here I care about. Yep, nope, nothing there I care about. Okay, cool. Yeah. Silent Hill HD Collection. That's a cheap and dirty remaster. That's not even a remaster, it's a port, but... That's a cheap and dirty port. And it shows. I don't even like Silent Hill, and I'm pissed about that one. Wait, seriously?
I don't, Baron. <laughs> that was a basculin. Oh. <clears throat> what I need is an unpheasant. No, I'm kidding. That is a good question, though, Kira White Noise. Memes and jokes aside, and I mean this with sincerity, I'm pretty sure that if Elder Scrolls VI came out right now, it would sell quite well. I, I mean, like, okay, assume that people knew it was coming. I'm, I'm pretty sure it would sell well. There are enough people... Oh my god, Baron. There are enough people who would be sufficiently invested just in the name brand to be like, Oh, it's Skyrim 2! And buy it on that basis. That being said, amongst the gaming community? That's a much trickier question. Oh. That's what that said. I'm trying to think of how to stab Michael as hard as possible. Oh, hi, Michael! What's up? What's up? Ahem. Sorry. Thank you very, very much for that sub. As always. Now, you actually said what you wanted that to go towards earlier when I was asking you about something that wasn't related to you. I don't remember what you said. Because I am an idiot. See if it's still in the chat log. Yeah, let's go up, go up, go up. Attack in while I continue to scroll up. Nope, it is officially off the chat log. Coward! Okay, <laughs> you got it. Why is this thing not dead? Oh my God, it's a ghost. God. This is just... Just, just die! Go away! The ghost's like, I already died! I'm a ghost! Oh, yeah. Possible to live without Pokemon. I mean, I know some people would think that. I'm actually kind of with you on that, Kira Whiteness. Like, I don't mind a game in the style of Homeworld, but Homeworld itself... I mean, first of all, Homeworld finished with Homeworld Cataclysm. Let's be honest about that. But second of all, Homeworld 2 also kind of ended the series in a happily ever after kind of a manner and can also go to hell. Ugh. Where does ghost Pokemon come from? Well, you see... <laughs> I don't know if I should do the joke. When one dead person really likes another dead person... No, okay, um... In some settings, like, say, Faerun, there have been stories about how undead people propagate. And it's it's not gross. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I, it could be argued to be gross. But it's not sexual. Uh, instead, what they do is they, is they go out and they go shopping for the person they want to adopt. And then they kill that person and raise them up as an undead. And the specific, you know, relationship kind of depends on the type of undead. Like, a ghoul is just going to be a mindless servant, obviously, but like a vampire or whatever. Welcome to the family! <laughs> Anyways. Moving on. 
if I'm being honest, I've always mentally assumed ghost is just a type, not literal. You know what I mean? Kind of, honestly, kind of like dragon, because those aren't literally dragons, it's more of a classification. Well, I haven't gotten my, uh, sixth yet. I need a flyer of some kind, and, well, I haven't gotten one yet, so... Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon? Oh, jeez, I don't know, Papa Nix. Um, I think so? I think I might own that. I might have played a friend of mine's copy. Hang on, hit the stream breaks! It's time to stop streaming. For a few seconds while I look this up. Yes, Far Cry Blood Dragon, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, would be acceptable to add to the list. Ah. Oof. Where in the Unovas, Carmen San Diego? I will also admit, ghost Pokémon were partially the mo the uh, inspiration for the spatial elemental type in my own setting. Oh, that sucks. I was actually looking forward to Bale and Wonderland, Pika. Oh, and I hadn't heard anything about the Mafia remaster, really. To answer your earlier question. Just really good at throwing my voice, Bio. I hired someone else to play the games for me. I'm just sitting, I'm just lounging with a mic, you know? Commenting as we go. I'm the couch commenter. Uh oh, it's an Emolga! I'm not screwing around with you. Die. I mean, faint. <laughs> I will admit, I kind of wish I could stream less than 10 hours a day, but the queue is still entirely too big to justify that. That's impressive, Ice Tray, especially since I'm actually naming characters after people who are live right now. That, that's, that's some impressive planning. It's going to depend on the math, Mr. Red. I'm actually tracking how many hours are being funded versus how many hours are being run every month and using that to kind of keep track of a, a ratio of throughput. When we get close... That's, that's going to kind of... Yeah, anyways. Um, uh, what is this? Oh, uh... Hmm. Uh, you know what? Let's do that instead of takedown, because A, takedown sucks, but B, and more importantly, half the time when I bring out Oscar, everyone else is dead anyways. No, the queue, I mean, the queue is is growing at a rate slower than it's being pushed through. We are, we are having good throughput right now. Learn surf? Now can I? I could learn fly, but I don't have a flyer. Yet, so. Do I even have any on me? Or am I? Oh, I do right there. Thought I didn't have any. Yep, I have. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can trade my shiny stone. God damn it, Baron! <laughs> Hang on, let me use this item to heal myself. 
three steps away. Hey, here's a full heal! Oh my god. No, we need a remaster of the Skyrim remaster. That's what I'm thinking. All in favor? Hit the stream breaks! From Bobbinix. Hang on, hang on. Let me go buy that game right now. It's okay, it's actually on sale, but... It's pretty much the new policy. Buy a game as soon as it's added to the list, because... I am not putting up with this... Having to axe games bullcrap again. Thank you, Papa Neeks, very, very much. I do very much appreciate it. Thank you. And I have put that towards... Oh, actually, no, I haven't. I haven't put it towards anything! I stole your money! <laughs> Now I've put it towards Firecraft 3 Blood Dragon. Game I just bought. I'm thinking about it, Darth Star Destroyer. I'm thinking about it, but I don't think I has the option yet. Slag the nest of an electric type Pokemon called Galvan Galvantula. Don't know why there's a nest here, but if there are folks having problems, a gym leader's the one to fix it. Korok, take it out. Well, there's a problem with that, Lord Haramont. And that's the thing that literally we ran into yesterday. Oh, hey, this game has been funded. Let me just go and add... Oh, my God, I can't buy it anymore. I have not. No, bio, sorry. Yeah, the only downside of the new policy, Lord Haramont, is it's going to increase my spending expenditures by a decent amount. I mean, I've spent, like, I think... Six-ish hundred dollars over the last two days buying games that are on the list. Ah. What I really should do is just kind of close the list down again, but, you know, I'm trying to commit to the fact that I said I wouldn't do that. I honestly figured the rate of new games being added to the list would trickle down, especially when people started to notice the overwhelming majority of games that have absolutely no priority yet. Like, the number of games that are at 0 or 1% funded is enormous. But, people keep adding games. That's why we have a Joltik. Any questions? I mean, A, it's old news, Pika. And B, it won't matter for a while. No, I'll tell you exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna be more restrictive. Which I probably should have done today and denied the two Alice games that were added. But. Going forwards, I'm just going to start saying no. So anyways, these two characters shouldn't be in either of these games, in my opinion. I, I guess it's more than two of them, but you know what I mean. My lord N, we brought the one you wanted. That was the Shadow Triad just now. Getsy's enlisted them in Team Plasma. 
apparently they were the ones who prepared the Gavantula test. Nest at the cave entrance. Chargestone Cave. I like this place. Formulas express electricity and its connection to Pokemon. If people did not exist, this place would be an ideal place. You have been chosen, you know that? Does it surprise you that I said that? Well, yeah, it's pretty surprising. Of course, such news should be a surprise. I told Getsis about you and your friends. After I did, he apparently used the Shadow Triad to find out about you. Charon is pursuing the ideal of strength. Poor Bianca has faced the sad truth that not everyone can become stronger. And you are not swayed either way, more of a neutral presence. Which is apparently a good thing. Team Plasma will be waiting for you ahead. Getsis wants to see what kind of Pokemon trainer you really are. Do not punch me in the face, please. I would not appreciate that. Hey, Bianca. Runner, did you know this? The floating stones move when you touch them. Hi! This place is always charged with lots of electricity that Pokemon like. The electricity reacts from one stone to another. That's why they're floating, but not all of them can be pushed. So I'm researching Clink, which looks like a gear, and I'm researching the orange of the arrow of the three. He does it. So this is for you. It's a lucky egg. The greatest item ever. Sort of. Actually, I think I am going to go ahead and give Venters the uh, egg. I'm the professor's bodyguard. Thanks, Bianca. Magnets. Or do they work? You know, being completely 100% honest, if I had, you know, Q-level powers, like actual, truly infinite ability to alter a game, I kind of would like to remake, actually proper remake Skyrim. That's what I thought. But that's mostly because I think Skyrim is the bones of a good game that needs the improvement. I mean, you know how it is. Skyrim's a good game when you mod the crap out of it. And as I've said before, I think that both, even Morrowind, but uh, as well Oblivion, actually are still good games without modding, whereas Skyrim? I have a lot harder time saying that. <laughs> Oh yeah, it'll never happen, Von Falkenstein. At least not until I you know, obtain my Q powers or take them away. But holy crap! You don't know that. Ugh. No. You, 
you probably know the answer to that question's one. Given what you know about my schedule and my free time. Especially since I just finished four solid weeks of recording. <laughs> Seed. That's actually a pretty good one, too. Uh... Flyer, so I don't care. It is, however, a little weak to fire. Caught it. Whew. Just in some games, over. To what? Hey, has this? Hey, it's me. Or rather, past me. Now. Some of you may or may not remember, at one point in time we were going to do a rock challenge, and Jesus! What the nonsense hell-ass balls was that? Yeah, die to a not very effective, you jackass. Anyways, Arshin was going to be on that list of the rock challenge, the rock gym challenge we're going to do. Oh, that sounds like that bug type in Gen in X and Y, which I actually liked, but yeah. So, my biggest wish list for EU4 or any grand strategy game is to have something more interesting to do during downtime. Because, you know, downtime's a problem, right? Like a pretty legitimate and serious problem when it comes to those games, at least in my opinion. You don't want to know, Sierra Mike. Anyways, um, so the best idea I've come up with uh, in recent memory to deal with that, the one, is to try and add some kind of what is effectively a city builder mechanic to things. Move! There we go. Dropping inputs or something. Anyways, um, you know, make it so, probably just one city, probably just your capital city. But, you know, do something so that you have something to spend resources, time, effort, and, you know, gameplay on during your downtime. Because, honestly, I don't know about you or, well, you, but uh, me and everyone else I've ever known who's ever played that game, what ends up happening is it's like, alright, we've just finished this war, but we have massive... Overexpansion is, and you know, we, we can't go back to war immediately because we're recovering from the last war. So, what you effectively do is you crank the speed up to max and you sit there for like a year in game time. And then it's like, okay, now I'm recovered, now let's go back to war. And solving that downtime would be my biggest wish list right there. As for the mana points, 
mana points are a pretty effective way to have a gameplay slash board gamey kind of a way of representing ability to take political action. So, as much as I don't really like mana points, I'm not sure what I would replace them with. <laughs> There's a couple of joltics in here. Oh, absolutely, Zactap. No question. Yeah, isn't Joltic uh, canonically the smallest? Not the not the lightest, but the smallest. Yeah, it's the one. I actually own it, but I haven't played it because time, and it hasn't come up for a review yet, so... whole turn is just, you attack, you miss. They attack, they miss. And that, that's it. That's the turn. I mean, those stats are total BS anyways. I've said that before. My personal favorite BS stats are the weight stats, which are nonsense. To be as nice about that as I can. Okay, like, some of those I can understand how they would be as small as a Joltik. How is a teacup as small as a Joltik? Like a cutie fly? Yeah, okay. Flabebe? Sure. A lay of uh, flowers? That... Also, Diglett can't possibly be that small. Unless it's only counting the part that comes out over the... out of the ground, which I suppose it may be. Case, never mind. Hey, Malakor. Oh, there we go. Why didn't that work last time? I keep losing inputs. It's weird. That's fair, Log. List of Pokemon by weight. There's actually a whole lot of Pokemon that weigh basically nothing, as you might imagine. But the heavy ones are the funny ones. Yeah, Mudsdale is the 
seventh heaviest Pokemon in the entire series. Gra yeah, Groudon makes sense. Eter Eternatus? Yeah, sure. Primal Groudon? Uh-huh. Cosmoem? Uh... Eh? Then there's a whole bunch of... Yeah, there's Giratina, which is kind of eyebrow-raising. Mega Steelix, I'll give you. Snorlax is a little bit eyebrow-raising, but whatever. And then we have Alolan Exeggutor, which is just... Wait, what? Agron, which is a giant steel dinosaur, weighs less than the Alolan Exeggutor, which is a tree. Just... Yeah, I, I think I've made my point. Anyways. Oh yeah, there's also the eternal joke about the Waylord, which based on its weight versus its size, is actually lighter <laughs> relatively than air and would technically float if you actually physics it out, which some people have done, but let's not talk about that. Anyways, point being, <clears throat> I think we're about done collecting data. The cave's been around since the distant past, but uh, data prove the Clink existed more than 100 years ago just can't be found. So that must mean Clink suddenly appeared 100 years ago. Where Pokemon came from and where they are going. These things I must destroy. If we can learn that, I believe we can get along even better. Oh, that's that's a little different direction. You know what, Runner? Pokemon are mysterious. Don't know if I agree with that. I wonder why these amazing little guys stay by our sides. is quite cute for being a tick, since I would unhesitatingly absolutely erase all ticks from reality if I could. See you around, Zawon. Ticks are just... ugh. If we make all ticks in real life more like Joltik, then yeah, okay, sure. I'll accept that. No, it's okay. They're not ticks. They're Voltix at that point, but Voltix. So it's okay. They're not horrifically disgusting, vile little burrowers that deserve to die. But as long as ticks exist, we are not good. They're Metroids. You know what? I will take Metroids over ticks. They're less unnerving and less horrible. And, I mean, we'd just die. 
I'd prefer to die than have a tick. I'm just saying. I mean, if you think about it, what ticks do is slow and horrible and just ugh. What Metroids do is drain you to death in seconds. And then you're dead, you're gone. Yeah, you, you won't die when, it, when a tick is st says, cl uh, clasped onto you. You will die weeks or months later. Slowly. Hey, Star Destroyer. That's true, you also may just end up allergic to meat for a few years. So there's a vein boy. I actually had a really good Sonic I liked back in the day, but I haven't had Sonic in years at this point. Well, yeah, it's Pokemon. Everything is less horrible in Pokemon than in real life. If we introduced Metroids into real life, we'd probably, you know, go extinct. Let's just be honest about that. Like, we'd probably have a lifeless world situation. And then eventually the Metroids would starve out, and that would be game. The end! Hunk rock the end of Pillars of Eternity 2 all over again. Yeah, but they're not here, Baron, so don't worry about it. I mean, if I was an ex-parasite, I wouldn't even be allowed to tell you, so I, I wouldn't worry about it. to self. Buy some damn repels when I get to town. Damn Metroids. Killing drive-in restaurants. And yeah, Sonic has a drive through in addition to drive-in, and drive through is as popular as ever. drive through was already popular. Almost every uh, restaurant around here has some form of drive-thru, even places that don't actually have a drive-thru. Like, there's a local place where you can drive up and be like, hey, and they'll be like, you know, they'll send someone out to take your order, go back inside, you know, ring it up, grab your food, ring it out. Poor man's version of a drive-thru. For a stream Imperial Starter Shore? Absolutely not. But what I usually do 
is I decide the moment I pick up a game if I'm going to bother to fill out the decks. I have actually... Mm, not quite. I've, I've, I've 90 percented black and white one before. There's a few specific things I didn't get, like some of the trade ones and uh, a couple of the ridiculous ones to get a hold of. I have actually been to a drive-in theater. What the hell is that? Once in my life. Showing the second Fantastic Four movie. I remember that. Spoilers, it's not a good film. That is really gross looking. still haven't seen Fen Forstick, and honestly, I probably never will. is the name of the pony I have that Bregwin is, because I can't seem to find it for some reason. Ah, oh, there it is, Blitzel. Well, it does have higher stats. I might, Malachor? I mean, four hours is a hard commit. Let me know where to get Thunderstones in this game, because... Because I need a Thunderstone if I'm capturing this thing. How is that even possible, Darth? I mean, I, I believe it. I, I know just how far down the... Uh... I, I know how much worse worse can get. Like, we think things are bad, and then we see something much worse, and then we see something even worse, and so forth and so on. Where is, there it is. One. And yeah, I see it. It evolves at 39, and then you use a Thunderstone on it. <laughs> if only it was Electric Ghost. Anyone want to be the the eel arm thing? Assuming we level it, which I'm still not decided on, by the way. Because it's this or Bregwin, and I'm kind of leaning more towards Bregwin. Well, Baron, you already have someone I'm not using, so... Mordoro, it shall be. Er, Mordoro, sorry. Have I been saying your name wrong this entire time? Mordoro, yes, okay. I'm not saying M0D0R0. I like you, but not that much. I don't think I like anybody that much. Like if Sis was like, hey, I need you to call me X0533-221, I'd be like, no. Love you, sis, but no. 
for the nuggets? I always use more money. Forget about it. That's okay, buddy. Secretly, we all know that the horrific nightmare death eel is, is absolutely you. <laughs> is that trope where like there's someone who's like innocent and sweet and kind and they they just look like there's some kind of horrifying movie monster i guess you could just call it the frankenstein thing hello i'm here to put off your daily allowance of donuts oh my god <laughs> did i forget the sprinkles i've used that actually with frenoy yeah, but nobody read the book, Eclectic. Nobody even liked the book. Ugh, I say. You gotta be careful. Tampering with the mail is a very serious crime. I feel like I've been in this cave my entire life. I don't know who the mailman is in Dead Rising 2, Baron, but I am absolutely that person. I always have been. <laughs> Did I really, Baron? See, I was quoting, word for word, the abominable snowman from Monsters University. It's all right, Burn. It's kind of forgettable, but it's not offensive. That's fair. Yes. Um. <laughs> I was like, you want me to move it to Majora's Mask? But we're playing that. 
Like, in a couple of weeks. That's not even far off. I will adjust yours to... Where are you? Here you are, Jesse P. That's you. I'll just rename this to Jesse's Mask. Dude, seconds. Thank you. I shall remove you from the list. I'll go back to typing. Uh, let's see, just a few, just a few, just a few. Yes. Uh, that was Civilization 2, I believe. Because Civ 2 and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 are the ones that had the most people that it put towards them. It's the, the reason why there's such a big list. If it was just the other games, then I would almost be done already. adventure on the GBA bio? Why? Answer Loke as to what my favorite Pokemon is. That's the little, uh, the bug thing in, uh, Sword and Shield, isn't it? Ekans? No, I'm not that fat. is my favorite Pokemon. I was wondering if anyone was ever gonna say it. There's, I know you can't see it right now because Von Falkenstein hates my face, but there is literally a Crobat on my shelf back here. <laughs> I was actually starting to think nobody knew that and I needed to remind people of that. I mean, messing is okay. We, we all know, whoops, that messing is okay. Hang on a second. Okay, there we go. All right. So we're co before I look at Imperial Star Destroyer's insanity. Yeah, here, hang on, hang on. Right here. I also have a Melodic, a Leafeon, and a Pachirisu. And that's it. Pachirisu is actually my sister's, technically. 
so I'm just taking it out of here. But those three are mine. Does anybody actually like Charizard? I, I, I don't think people like Charizard. I think, I think that's just, you know, one of them meme answers. Nobody really means. Hey, someone noticed my bubble shot. Yeah, those showed up uh, semi-recently. All right, so, and then gameplay-wise, this might actually, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to hedge my bets, but it'll be interesting if this does end up being the highest-reviewed Pokemon game we've played so far. And we've reviewed, um, three, I believe, prior to now. Of course, the problem is, like any Pokemon game, while it has lots of good, it also has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven negatives to gameplay. <laughs> Which is just... <laughs> That's Pokemon for you, right? And I, I'm staring at those, I can't argue any of those, like the forced save slot, the forced early tutorial, the, the, the RG, RNG nature of catching, the walkthrough-itis of Pokemon games in general, the unskippable cutscenes, the encounter rate is ridiculous, and the, the level of... the nature of how it does leveling, all of those are bad. That's seven negatives. Bam! <laughs> you know? Not a lot I can do about that. Anyways, thank you, Imperial Star Destroyer, very, very, very much. Tell you what, I'll bow when I'm in combat. How's that sound? And you want that to go towards Legend of Lagaya, a game I just purchased, which hopefully will show up sometime in the next several months. Because it was a used copy. You know how that goes. I hope it's a good game, because just finding a copy of that was actually kind of a pain. But I did. I did. I think it's an RPG, based on context clues. I wouldn't know. I'm not familiar with it. Uh... Wait, wait. Candy leveling remind me a little, Billy. So I don't think so. The ice tray is gone, never to be seen again. Loop Hero. Now there's a game. It's, it's always funny to me how many games I want to add to the list that aren't. <laughs> oh, right, right. Like you get the candy from doing something and then you... I did like that and I don't remember if I gave it a positive? <laughs> Only there was a way to check that kind of thing. <laughs> One-handed kind of sucks. Shield, here we go. Looks like I did not. Also looks like I didn't even mention it. Was that that game? Oh. Hello, S.A. Ross. I'm never gonna play this game, guys. It's just you keep... Yeah, no, so, Pokemon Shield's review is probably out of date, if we're being completely honest. But I sort of accepted that, because we're going to be playing it again. In fact, it's literally the next game we're playing. So I figured we're, well, the idea was we'll shore that up as we're actually sitting and staring at the game, rather than trying to go off of memory. So that'll be something to bring up then. Hey, hey! 
Loop Hero. That's... I'm happy about that. I'm not even going to check that. I'm, I'm super happy about that. Like I said, for those of you unaware, I have a list of games I want to stream slash review someday. It's a decently large list. Very, very, very few games from it have been added to the actual list. Nine games from this have been added to the actual list. Ten now, sorry, now that Loop Hero's been added. I didn't mention that here. There we go. What is Loop Hero? Oh, geez. It's, it's a concept game that looks really awesome. Really quick, first of all, thank you, Ice Tray, very, 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 very much. Always appreciate that support. Much obliged. Thank you. I was actually thinking about it. Rare candies might not be a bad way to bypass grind. Because they already have a detriment to them. You know, the fact that they don't help with the stats. They just push your level up with uh, zero EVs, right? So it's, it's the ch quick and dirty levels, in short. It's the non-optimized levels, and I think that would actually be a decent method of, you know, having leveling happening, or, or, or you know, uh, smoothing out the grind in these games, if they were substantially more common. Like, if they were just a thing that you could have on an easy or relatively quick-to-access basis. Maybe just literally have it so you can buy them at a store, I don't know. Turn money into exp, you know? I don't know, food for thought. That being said, I do think the exp candies idea is a good idea. I have no idea why I didn't give a plus for it. It might have been because leveling was just so ridiculously fast in Sword and Shield, it didn't occur to me at the time that that is a good way to bypass that. Oh, and now they're in combat. Thank you, Imperial Star Destroyer, very, very much. Much obliged. Much appreciated. Thank you again. Very much. If I'm being honest, while I get the point, I personally never enjoy the daily mechanics that they started in Gen 2 and have been using in several since. <laughs> That's mostly personal preference. Like, it's... I, I, I suppose that's not true. It's mostly the fact that I can't schedule my time around the game. I schedule the game around my time, you know what I mean? You know, I, I can't guarantee that I will have Tuesday at such and such in order to be able to do what you fig. Yeah, it's just being an adult, you know? And I didn't get into Pokemon until I was in college, so... It was when Gen 2 came out, Darth Maduro. I think... When did Gen 1 come out? What was the year? In the States, specifically. I 
remember, I got into Gen 1 late. I'm pretty sure I didn't get into Gen 1 until Gen 2 was on, on the verge of coming out. 98 sounds about right. Yeah, that would have been I would have been on my way out of high school at that point. What did get me into Pokémon? I mean, obviously I was exposed to it because it was hard to avoid it. Like I said, I saw the movie. Ugh. And uh I used to have Nintendo Power. And they had those comics, which were actually just panels from the show, put into still format. But I don't remember the specific thing that got me to play Gen 1. I know what got me to play Gen 2. I was a friend of mine. Because I, I played Gen 1 and I did like it, as I've said before. I was just like, this is just kind of bad. This is like an old NES RPG. What the hell? And I put it down. And then a friend of mine was like, hey, you should play uh, you know, Pokemon Silver. And I'm like, why? No, no, it's so much better. Oh, well, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm probably going to play it on mute, Poppinese. But yeah, Gen, Gen 2 is the answer for what actually got me invested in Pokemon. Because I liked Gen 2. I got into it. Like, Gen 2 was just such a leap forward in quality from Gen 1. And that's with the, the then perspective and the now perspective. Well, that's valid, Mr. Red. But that's not any different from how it is right now. Yeah, AC1 to AC2. That's a perfect example, Malakor. <laughs> that even applies in this in the in my own opinions. I didn't like AC1. I enjoyed AC2, and AC2 isn't even that great of a game, but it was just so much better. Anyways. So my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon that isn't Crobat, who was added in Gen 2. Think about that for a minute. There are a lot of Team Plasma people in here. Yeah, honestly, I'd like to say Tyranitar, but I've basically never used one. I've caught, I've, I've, I've leveled up to Tyranitars a few times because I've. 100% at a couple of dexes, but it just takes so long to get there. It's kind of like, all right, well, done everything by the time I got there. And now Lilligant wasn't Gen 2. Hi. of Gen 2s? I probably can. You got it, Eclectic. Thank you for watching my show. Anyways, my point, Mr. Red, is that's a good idea, it's just that is how it already is. So, good idea. Sword. And thank you very much, Volcanto. As always, I will, of course, defeat you immediately with Flame Charge. If you know what you want to put that towards, please let me know. Okay, here we go. Here's the Gen 2s. So, let's see. So, Furred is awesome. Crobat is duh. Ampharos is still one of my favorite electrics. So they added 
mischievous. Steelix is awesome. I never liked Scizor, or Schizor, excuse me. I mean, I don't dislike it, it's just it's not my thing. There's Tyranitar, and there's the, the... So, yeah, okay, so from that list, since that's everything at this point, um, I'd probably give it to either Steelix, Espeon, which I didn't even mention earlier, or... I think I'm going to give that to Steelix, because Steelix is just awesome. Continental Drift. And if you set it up right, THUNK! <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, Mr. Red, I do plan to add some stuff to the list. It's just, you know... Not there yet. The list is big enough. The queue is big enough as it is. It doesn't need to be bigger. AC Valhalla, you got it, Vol Volcanto. Thank you again. Gen 3, since I got the list here. Let's see here. Now you got me thinking. Uh, okay, so there's Gen 2. Gen 1 has plenty of fire types. Far too many. some decent ones that came out in Gen 3. Picking a favorite there is going to be kind of difficult. Let's see. I mean, it's, I, I'm kind of memeing because it's melodic, but after melodic, let me think about that. Flygon is pretty awesome. I do like Flygon. And of course, Mawile, which is still my favorite steel type. So we got Flygon, Mawile, Agron, who's awesome. Gardevoir, who's probably my favorite psychic type. And I guess that's it, actually. We'll go with those. Salamance, I, I believe it or not, I don't like most of the dragon types, but Salamance always just looked too dorky to me. It's the Dragonite problem, you know? Like, I look at Dragonite and it's like, what the heck is that? Like, I'd have to think about it. What is my favorite dragon type? Let's see here. So we got Dragonair. Garchomp is... I, I mean, okay, I'll, gi I'll give you Garchomp. I'll give you that. Look, all I'm saying is that Dragonite isn't the worst six visual-styled Pokemon in the game. There's, there's worse. 
Uh, anyway, so <clears throat> Garchomp, uh, Dragonair, Dragapult, Flygon, just mentioned him. Uh, is that it? No, Noivern. I like Noivern too. Is that it? Yep, that's it. That's my drag. Those are the only dragon types I actually like right there. Personally. Are you why are you confusing me while I'm asleep? Why am I dreaming about this? Oh god. Speaking of Giratina, let's see what my favorite Gen 4 Pokemon is here. Redo the index numbers in Gen 4? I just want the Gen 4 ones, it's not that hard. Here we go, okay, found it. Bidoof, obviously. Or Badoof. Going down the list of Gen 4 Pokemon. This is really badly sorted. Yeah, but Bidoof sounds more terrible. And also, I've actually heard it said as Bidoof. But I don't know if it is supposed to be Bidoof, and I don't care. Because it's Bidoof. Seems to be working so far, Fun Falkenstein. He's just lowering my accuracy while confusing me. Okay, here we go, I found a good list. Okay, so here's Gen 4 for realsies. Still haven't found any Gen 4s I like, but give me a sec. Other than Badoof. Obviously, Low Punny is my favorite Gen 4. I mean... <laughs> uh, okay, um... What am I doing? I'm using my milk. Here we go. Um, okay, here we go. So we got... Uh, well, there's Garchomp. There's Garchomp. That, that's, a lo that's a Gen 4. I do like Garchomp. 
came up with one so far. Ah, Leafeon! Hey! That's that's my favorite, Leafeon. Leafeon's amazing. Gallade is pretty cool. Frostlass, so I think someone mentioned that in chat. So we got Garchamp, Frost, Garchomp, Frostlass, Gallade, Leafeon. Battle. All the Rotoms are there. And there's the Elites, and there's the Legendaries, and nobody cares. Okay, so. So Gen 5. One we're on. Let's see here. Clearly it's Swoobat. I mean, what else could it possibly be? Yeah, it's probably going to be Lilligant. Lilligant, Crocodile. Vanillux, which I unironically enjoy. And Chandelure. I think that's it for Gen 5 of ones I like. The, the top, I should say. The really good ones. Then we have Gen 6, which I barely know. I don't even remember which uh, starter we had in Gen 6. No, 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 don't. This click there. God damn it, really? Really? Jeez, I don't know, Baron. I mean, everything I've been naming. There you go, there's my answer so far. I also don't know much about the Gen 7 ones, although I did like Decidueye quite a bit. It's Mag Cargo, also known as As Hot as the Surface of the Sun. Never gonna stop making fun of that. Oh yeah, Mudsdale. There you go. There's my favorite Gen 7 one right there. I'm sorry, Von Falkenstein. I apologize. Um, okay, so. The... I had an answer to that. What the heck was it? Uh... Actually, the first time I saw the bag cargo thing was on uh, Cracked Star Destroyer. I have since seen no less than three other groups including Dorkly, make fun of the Mag Cargo thing. That's it, stupid!
can't remember, so I'm gonna have to just think of a new one. Give me, give me a second here. Jump off, jump off this time. Oscar is apparently very tired. His bloodthirst awakens. That's true in most uh, fiction, unfortunately, Baron. Convection Conspection, I believe, is the name of that trope. Yeah, dear Nintendo. <laughs> Sincerely. Just that good. She's got a drill burst. She dug down. Fuck all this time. easier if you pick another setting and then I pick someone from that setting mode Falkenstein. Because I keep bouncing around between like every setting I can think of, which is a lot. Depends on how they do it, Mr. Red, as usual. There is such a thing as a good redemption arc, after all. Hell, I'm not even bothered by what they did to Kerrigan over in StarCraft 2. Speaking of which... Nothing wrong there, Bear. I don't see. I don't see the issue. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly, Caroline Noise. Like I said, I, I don't mind it because they went out of their way to not only explain it, but actually try to use it in a direction. That being said, her redemption arc doesn't bother me. It's what they did pretty much immediately after that that bothers me, and that will honestly probably be a negative when we get there. <sighs> oh, there's tons like that, Mo Malkenstein. Hell, I have one of those in my party right now. And I'm not, you know, going to that extent of planning, but it is still a true statement. See what's happening. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that is one of those interesting questions. We've debated that more than once. You know, how do you do redeem Vader and not kill him? Like, even if you just if you don't have him die in a heroic sacrifice, then a whole lot of people are going to want to kill him legally. Well, that's because... Oh my god, look behind you, Imperial Star Destroyer! I don't know, I, I thought I saw something over there, but whatever it is, it's clearly gone. Anyways, as, as you can clearly see, it's no longer on... I, I mean, it's it, it was never on the website. No issues here. It's funny, I updated the Q page, but I did not update the main page, silly me. Now that sounds like something that would actually happen to the real life Bregwin. Bregwin did something good! Applause! Encore! Your special attack rose! You're very confused! That's actually an interesting question. Like, a tr what's a truly good redemption arc? Because Vader's, as Kara White Noise is pointing out, isn't really in a redemption arc. Ignoring the fact that there's debatability as to what's actually going on, for example, it could, for example, it could be simply the fact that Vader dies and is replaced by Anakin. So it's, there's no real redemption there. Or you could say that the dark side was poisoning Anakin's mind to the point where he was influenced by an external source, which, again, isn't really a redemption art. And you get the point. Uh, what am I doing? Go back to you. The Exile. Uh, Garrick? Ooh, that's actually a good one. I, I, I think I'll agree with that one. But not as much as our great lord and savior, Gul Dukat. It was truly the greatest. I can't even say it. Honestly, uh, Midna from Twilight Princess would probably qualify as well. While she was not exactly a villain to start, she was definitely not a good person. And was actively manipulating and seeking harm for others for extremely selfish and violent reasons. Actually, I would agree with Starlight Glimmer, but I imagine most people in chat don't really know that arc, and we're not even done with that arc yet. We're like a third of the way through that arc. Oh yeah, Jakar. That's a perfect example.
Yeah, I would agree with Discord. They had a couple of missteps and they stretched it out, probably because they didn't plan it, but... It was a good arc. I mean, so I disagree with that, Von Falkenstein, because I remember season one. I mean, let's ignore for a moment the obvious meta stuff that was going on in Babylon 5, and just look at Jakar as the character. He was a villainous person who was actively trying to murder and destroy, not only on a personal scale, but on a large scale. Now, you could argue that he was justified in that. That's debatable. But it doesn't change the fact that he was villainous. He himself flat out admits in a much in an episode in uh, mid to late season two that if uh, I'm going to dodge around spoilers, but if she had come to him and told him the truth, you know, just a year ago, he would have killed her right then and there in cold blood for that act, for that knowledge. Now, obviously. That's why he has an arc. He, he grows. He, he changes. Jakar has one of the best arcs in Babylon 5. But... <laughs> I'm sorry. That is a villainous person. I suppose I should say that was a villainous person. sick of this goddamn cave. Okay, we, we can just disagree on that. That's cool. I'm with it. Anyways, Jakar has a great redemption arc from being a villain to being a good guy. So I'm, I'm with that on that, too. I have no repels, Bio. I actually, when I walked in here, when I entered this cave, I was like, you know what? As soon as I get out of this cave, I'm gonna buy a bunch of repels. Because I don't have any. And the only reason I didn't turn around then was I figured the cave would be short. And I didn't want to go back through the forest area which led here first. <laughs> tempted to pull up a map at this point just so I could, you know, get through this friggin' place. Eh, probably not, Baron. Especially since most of that would be in two cameos in two separate games. One of which is like five minutes long. funny is writers love redemption arcs for obvious reasons they're very popular but what's funny about it is most writers don't seem to know how to do them and this is one of the reasons in my opinion why we see such a commonality of the two most common redemption arcs redemption arc a i wasn't actually evil to begin with you know kerrigan or redemption arc b completely unearned uh to use another Blizzard example, uh, frickin' Hellscream, the the alternate Hellscream. So alternate Grom, to be specific, not Garrosh. So <laughs> alternate Grom Hellscream is a perfect example of a completely unearned redemption arc. Just yeah, I'm a good guy now. Drenor is free. Ignore all that horrible, horrible butchering and murdering I did on a mass scale and a personal scale without any external influence or any imp impetus to do so. I just I was just me doing it. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Demons are here? Hang on, hang on. Let's go kill some demons. And I'm a good guy now. Bull crap. Negative to story. Ahem. Many different values mixed together, and the world becomes gray. That is unforgivable! I will separate Pokémon and people, and black and white will be clearly distinct. Only then will Pokémon become perfect beings. Yes, that is my dream. That is the dream I must fulfill. Runner, do you have a dream of your own? I do, actually. Infinite and absolute power. Wonderful. You'll learn what kind of dream you have in battle! Wait, wait, no, wait, no! By the way, a very minor point I want to point out that I actually rather like about Nen's characterization. You'll notice that as he, when he started talking, as in earlier in the game, he was very calm and most of his sentences ended in periods. Or dot dot dots. Almost every line he just said ended in an exclamation mark. I only point that out because you can see how his contis... Now that he's getting out into the world interacting with other people, including us, he is being introduced to ideas that were alien to him because of his backstory, which we haven't covered yet. Yeah, exactly, Baron. Because N is interacting with people, he's, like, being challenged on his ideals with knowledge. And he's just kind of like, wait. And he, so he, he pulls the usual thing where he gets angry about it and slams the walls up, but he is still questioning it. Which, hi, Shikor. Do me a favor, Shikor. Shikor, the, the greatest, greatest person ever. So you put two dollars towards Civilization 2. Civilization 2 has been axed. Could you redistribute that, please? And yeah, no, N, N is totally ideals. 100%. Like I said, his ideals are being challenged by knowledge. Yeah, Shikor, I was about to point out that Path of Radiance was also done. See, the catch is you only put $2 towards Civ 2. You've put 134 to Path of Radiance. So I wanted you to think about that one a little bit more than just a quick and dirty redistribute. Unless you want to just quick and dirtily redistribute it, that is your decision. But yeah, you were actually our second majority shareholder in the Path of Radiance run, and I am sorry, but that run has been axed, and I don't know what else to add to that. <laughs> Will it kill drama? Really, Malakor? I can I could kinda see that. You got me thinking about it now. It's funny, because I don't think he's technically even a character in the AU. Like, I don't think he exists at all in the AU. But, yeah, no, I, I think I agree with that in the EU. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Red, I'd have to think about it. Well, just let me know, Shikor. I'll go ahead and group it right here. Put these both under the same category. Okay. And put it there. And since you're here, I'm going to go ahead and remove you from the list for now. Hi, Bregwin. Well, yeah, the dark side always messes up redemption arcs, in my opinion, because it's usually an external force which influences you, which, you know, that, that 
that throws a wrench into the very idea of redemption. You know the saying, if you're a different person when you're on drugs, and then you quit doing drugs, is that a redemption arc, you know? And I'm not, I'm not saying that whether that is or it isn't, I'm saying that's something people have debated for a long time. The light side is only poisonous depending on which rider you're talking about, and not so in the AU, unfortunately. See, that's getting into debatables again, Mr. Red. Oh yeah, just to point it out once again, notice he's using Pokemon he caught from this very cave. Again, that's going to be a trend until, I believe, the very last time we fight him. It's either the last or the second last is when they stop doing that. Please don't crit again. Okay, that's, that, was, that was bad luck, and almost worse luck. That's a good question, Bio. Xar's fall to the dark side was hysterical. I don't even mean that in a bad way. He just beasted right over there. Huh. Okay. Dark side. <laughs> like I'm, I'm being a little facetious. But anyways. <clears throat> Why? Is it impossible for me to win while feeling bad about being a trainer? As if I could pursue the truth while some with something as meaningless as a battle. As if that could make me worthy to become friends with the legendary Pokemon. Butter. Just a little further to Mistralin Silly Mistralton City. Bianca, you have good ears. I can't believe you heard Runner's voice from this far away. Bianca, you have great ears. I can't believe you heard me talk at all. Runner, who is this trainer? Professor Juniper, what are you thinking? You appear to have no qualms about the relationship between Pokemon and people. You put Pokemon into categories using arbitrary rules and think you can understand them like that. The very idea of a Pokedex revolts me. What do you have to say for yourself? Oh my, it looks like you're not my biggest fan. Your opinion is understandable. It happens to be different from mine, which is equally understandable. How about if all people get to decide for themselves how to relate to Pokemon? You're saying I should just allow people to think what they want and treat Pokemon however they want, no matter whether Pokemon suffer. I refuse to tolerate the existence of a world like that. right away, but I hope he'll spend a little time trying to understand how others feel. Now then, I think I'll go collect a little more data. For Pokemon and people to get along better, we need to take steps to learn more about them. To learn more about them. Uh, Runner, I'm gonna go with Persephone Juniper, because I'm her bodyguard. Bye, Bianca. You got it, Sheikar. We'll quick and dirty the two over to uh, Stanley Parable. Give me a second. And let me know when you decide on the, the big block. It doesn't all have to go to one thing. It's just, you know, it's, it's a big chunk. With you here, that means I just need to get a hold of Russ. Everyone else is relatively small donations. I, I don't sound that to be dismissive. But rather, it's easy to redistribute $2. I was more worried about distributing the, the triple-digit donations, you know? Oh, thank God. Let's buy some repels. Meanwhile, we're talking about Star Wars in a Pokemon stream. As you do. <laughs> uh, repel, 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 repel. 
Oh, yeah, I can buy full heals now. Since I do need to catch a couple more things. Literally, like, two more things, but still. Why I keep track of this stuff, Shikor? That, I mean, I'd kind of be into that ice tray. Speaking of which, Von Falkenstein, the Star Wars character, I would most want to see them becoming a gym leader. Oh god, I suddenly can't think of his name. Tentacle Dude from uh, Clone Wars. Oh god, what is his name? That's it, Coon. Flea Coon or Plo Coon. I already say it now. It's Coon. I remember that. I think he would be an amusing gym leader, and he would not be Water Gym. Quite the contrary. He'd be like, "Oh yeah, you thought I would be Water, didn't you? But no." And he'd be electric, totally. It is Plo Koon, right? Or is it Kit Fisto? Hang on, let me just look it up. Hang on, hang on. Plo Koon. Oh no, I do not mean Plo Koon. Sorry. I actually mean Kit Fisto. Yeah, sorry. I mean Kit Fisto. Sorry. I told you I couldn't think of his name. Nobody listens to me. There's the move deleter, finally. And there's the move reminder. I only have one hard scale for him. I'll probably need that. Erdnot Rex has a decent one, but it's almost entirely off camera, which is part of the problem there. And now the sexiest woman in Pokemon. So you found 64 Pokemon. Huh? Staggering, you've seen a clink. You've become quite the train. Excuse me, I was excited, forgot my manners. I am Juniper too. Cedric Juniper. The professor who gave you the Pokedex is my daughter. That girl's told me a lot about you. Well, it makes my day to see you. In honor of our meeting, I'm going to upgrade your Pokedex. Thanks. Some Pokemon change forms even when it's the same individual. If you've already seen a form, you can check it this way. And yada, 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 yada. Professor, who's that trainer? Oh, I forgot my introduction. Skyla, this is a my friend of my daughter's. Runner is trivia. Yeah, we'll see Skyla's outfit in a few minutes here. I guess that means you'll be challenging the gym. I'm really looking forward to it. That's right, Runner, you should challenge this gym. If nothing else, this gym's really out there. See you, see you Skyla. If something comes up again, I'll let you know. Professor, my plane is a cargo plane. It carries cargo, not people. And yeah, if I was to cover resistance, it would be a streamination, not a re rumination. Gym leader, I'd be happy to challenge you, but there's something I need to take care of first. Just now, as I was flying the cargo plane, I saw something on top of Celestial Tower. I'm sure it's a sick Pokemon. I have to look at it right away. As I say, it's time to pick up our final Pokemon, I think. Probably the Golurk. I mean, aren't people just other forms of Pokemon? Isn't that Jun 4, I believe? 
Oh, is that you who asked that, Malakor? Sorry, I didn't actually know the answer to that, and I... Whenever I don't know the answer off the top of my head, I let a question sit on Tumblr. It's a, admittedly a bad habit of mine. Anyways. I don't know. Like, I, I really don't know. That, that's the problem. I'm not even sure how I have access to, to watching the show at this point. Like, I don't know what it's on. Yeah, let's go play on the airstrip. Actually, what's funny is that person flat out says, It's okay today, because we only had one flight today. But don't do what I'm doing right now. No, bio. Truth be told, while I do firmly ascribe to the theory that Pokémon are sentient and sapient, I do not ascribe to the theory that Pokemon and people are the same thing, despite what Gen 4 has to say on the matter. But then again, you know me, I don't even think the Pokedex entries are, you know, factual. Uh, Gen 5, von Falkenstein. I'd probably put it under the streaminations, Malakor. And just kind of divvy it up a little bit, weirdly, you know? Because some of the episodes are so short. And it would be a relatively short series anyways. Yeah, that's another thing. I've never really believed in the whole... Oh yeah, so this Pokémon created all life with the unknowns. Sure they did, is my basic reaction to that. As we in the business say, roll to disbelieve. Like, oh, what is it? Because, um, obviously, so, so to, to talk back that, to, to walk that back for a second, excuse me. Uh, donate. Streaminations or donations. Although, don't do it yet. The doors are closed. We're, we're locked down for streaminations for literally months. So I'm not even allowing donations for streaminations right now. But they will eventually be donations, just like the previous ones were. Um... What was I looking for? Lugia. That's it. So there are several cases of where the legendaries or the big Pokemon have demonstrable, you know, significant power. Groudon... Actually, yes, there is Ice Tray. Groudon and, um... Uh, Kyogre, Kyogre or however the hell you say that stupid name, are probably the two most obvious examples of that, right? But... You know, some of the other Pokémon, like, say, Lugia, is probably another good example of a Pokémon where its powers are probably completely exaggerated, thanks to myth and legend and so forth and so on. So, the idea of something like Arceus being like, I'm super, the creator of all Pokémon, is something that I see no evidence of and therefore roll to disbelieve. And it just kind of varies, kind of goes back and forth, depending on the individual Pokémon. Like, can Giratina actually reset reality? Eh, probably not.
Yeah, we see Arceus, and then we can capture him. <laughs> I mean, I know, that's tongue-in-cheek at that point. Oh, hey! Triple battle! Screwed! I mean, wasn't that his stupid plan, Baron? Emphasis on the word stupid. Oh wow, these are... Oh yeah, there's also a Pokémon that's responsible for time, and a Pokémon that's responsible for space. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's all I gotta say to that. Yeah, I just, personally, because I'm all mundane and boring, I think Mew is just a very, very, very old Pokémon. And because of the nature of how morphic Pokémon are in general, yeah, yeah I, I would say that Mew is probably, by default, an ancestor Pokémon. Just like someone from 800 years ago would also be someone who is technically an ancestor of many people nowadays. Yes, Necrozma! There's another good example of a Pokemon where I just roll my eyes at it. Sure. Uh, let's go for that. No, it's fine, Michael. I'm not trying to convince you. But by the same token, there's no way in hell you could ever convince me. Now, if you're just using the anime as evidence, then that's valid. I am completely dismissing the anime because the anime is different continuity. So I'm, I'm not talking about that. That's over there. Yes, I know, Baron. And I rolled my eyes at it, because it's stupid! <laughs> oh yeah, Celebi can time travel while we're on the subject. God. <laughs> uh, did that not land? Oh, I flinched. That's what happens. Yeah, don't forget, there's a place where Necrozma had already eaten all the light, but there's still people there somehow. Let's, let's completely ignore the logic of that one. I mean, I have to acknowledge the fact that multiple dimensions exist in Pokémon. Because that's not only there's not only waves after waves of evidence of that, but that's also a plot point of several games, and is something that's clearly by design of the authors. But the idea that the Pokémon are literally gods just makes me roll my eyes. And break one's dead. I mean, in all in total sincerity, I don't buy it. I really don't. It just does not line up. Pokemon is too low tier to also be so high tier in a way that is also low tier. Like there's there's an in, there's inconsistency there. You know what I mean? Or maybe you don't know what I mean. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and grab that. Now, it's easy to explain that. In fact, it's extremely easy to explain that. The writers didn't think about it. That's it. That's, that's, that's all there is to it. That's the explanation. Shazam! I mean, nothing else needs to be added to that. It's extraordinarily... And maybe I'm just too cynical because I've analyzed literally hundreds of fiction in my life. But sometimes all there is, is the fact that the writers didn't think about it. Either deliberately or because they suck. In 
this case, by all accounts, it appears to be deliberate. And that's fine. They don't need to think about it. Do I like Digimon? Eh, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that... okay. Please get some experience. God. But... I... don't even see your logic chain there, uh, Michael, sorry. But it's okay, I'm willing to drop this, since obviously we're just running into walls in communication here. God damn it, no! Oh, thank God she lived. I was about to be pissed. Uh, all that effort just to make sure Bregwin gets that experience dump right there was about to be for nothing. Uh. Hey! I actually don't know if the Pokemon series has ever made a, uh, excuse me, has ever made, has ever had a mainliner. I, I don't know, I'm not that familiar with the behind the scenes. Hey, we're finally gonna get rid of Tackle. <laughs> well, back we go. I'm trying to think of another example, and I'm failing at it. You ever play Fallout 3, Michael? I hate to use this example because it's actually an example that someone else has used, but it's a good example, so whatever. Okay, so, why are slaves in Fallout 3? <laughs> now, before I go any further, I should probably mention I like Fallout 3. Probably more than most people I know. In fact, I've gotten a huge amount of venom and toxicity over the years, especially on this channel, because of the fact that I like uh, Fallout 3. Now, I mean in the capital waste, Sloaner, not up in the pit, not up in Pittsburgh. Uh, I know, Star Destroyer, that's what pisses me off. But someone mentioned this to me and I was like, oh, that sucks. I have a pet peeve of having a, a, a narrative point of bringing something up, and then someone else brings up the same point, and then everyone's gonna say that I just stole the idea from that, that person, which I didn't. It's just I haven't covered Fallout 3 or New Vegas yet, so it's never come up. I've never actually covered Fallout 3 New Vegas. <laughs> but you're right, he did bring up the exact same point. I was gonna talk about the nature of intent when it comes to storytelling in a slightly different direction than he did it. The direction I was going to take it is 
the Obsidian team wanted to write a story about a world that makes sense, right? And the Fallout 3 team, the Bethesda team, wanted to write a story that showed a thematic and emotional impact. Thus, as a natural consequence of that, this is what I was going to get into, one of those is a post-apocalypse, because one of those just so naturally slides into a post-apocalyptic setting. That would be Fallout 3. And one of those is post-post-apocalyptic, because a world that makes sense is a world that started functioning as a world. By, by, by the mere fa fact that there is a world there, that there's design and concept and thoughts, and that people have started to develop and sh have their structure to it, it has moved into post-post-apocalypse, right? Hence the big distinction between Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. And that was going to be the whole speech I was going to give. And, and then he got there first. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Rewinding a bit to Michael. The reason I bring this up is, to me, Pokemon is and always has been Fallout 3. Not really designed to make a world, more designed to make moments. Designed to make uh, individual story beats and individual thematic points. I mean, you'll notice that as much as I do like the themes of Gen 5, they have been hammering it in in almost every single cutscene. Just non-stop, right? And so whenever I process a work of fiction like this one, what ends up happening, especially nowadays in my older age, is I just kind of start smearing headcanon over all of it because there are so many holes there, right? Because they didn't design it to be a world where holes weren't there. It wasn't their intent as they were writing it. Um, do I want that? Yeah, I mean, even just the most basic thing that everyone knows about Fallout 3, the timeline is completely wrong. Even the writers have admitted the time is wrong for Fallout 3. And there's there's reasons I'll go into whenever we finally stream Fallout 3 for why they decided to put it there. But you get my point, right? And that's why I look at things like Arceus or, you know, the creation of time and space or the, there's Pokemon that represent the emotions, but only in this one area. Or the fact that Unova was created by a dragon and I just kind of roll my eyes a bit because it's like, yeah, sure. It's pretty much my reaction to the whole thing. Because the more you sit back and think about the world building of Pokemon, the less it makes sense. Instead, I just try to get into the moments and enjoy the, the specific themes and the characters and the scenes, which are awesome. Does that make any sense, Michael? This is my overall point. That's, that's why I'm trying to explain this a little bit. It's one of the reasons I liked the fact that Sword and Shields wasn't big scale, you know? I mean, yeah, it had... What's his face? The, the Eternatus Eterna or whatever his name was. But for the most part, Sword and Shield was nice and low tier. And I think that suits Pokemon better because of the world building that they were doing in Sword and Shield. It's also one of the things I liked about Sword and Shield was the world building, you know? It is pretty similar to the beef I have with Elder Scrolls. And ironically, Fallout 3, Elder Scrolls, hmm. Ah, let's go for it. We're probably fast enough. Or we're actually slower than him? What? We're higher level and a lightning horse, and we're actually slower than a groundwater toad thing that's actually Palpatine. What? I, I thought for sure we would. Okay, whatever. It's the Palpatoad. Someone, I forget who, someone sent a picture for that during the thing. That was awesome. I mean, it's also called Palpatoad, for God's sakes. With each passing moment, you make yourself more my poker, my EVs. Hang, hang on, hang on. I gotta share this.
One second. Nerdman just got a hold of me, and he's reallocating to Valhalla. Which we'll go ahead and jot that down really quick. Forget. Oh, that's true. Palpatine would be all about the IVs. He would. Palpatine would super min max. You know, Palpatine would just be a mega super min maxer. Like, he would have a team that is just ungodly powerful. Yes, that's the picture. Everyone look at Prequin's picture really quick. <laughs> Unlimited rare candies. Is that another one? Hang on. <laughs> oh my god! Is Chancellor Palpatode. The dark side of Pokemon leads to many abilities some might consider to be... unnatural. What the hell was I saying? I've completely lost track of my thought process now. Ah, whatever. Clone troopers? Oh gosh. Um I mean, I feel like clone troopers would be really heavy. No, no, I take that back. Every single clone trooper would use either Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan. All of them. Bregwen! Oh my god, Bregwen, you're killing me here. Breaking my balls, Bregwen. Hitmon Top would be like the really rare genetic disorder ones, like I forget his name, but the awesome guy who had the physical disorder. He's, oh God, I can't think of his name now, which makes me sad, but. He was in Clone Wars. He dies bravely because he's awesome. Dang it, whatever. Whatever. Point being. Yes. Take the experience, Bregman. Take it. God, that kid's bug Pokemon, Pokemon almost killed my lightning zebra. Only in Pokemon. Can that be a serious statement? Is it 99? I believe you, Zach Taft. I don't remember. Exactly, Von Falkenstein. And then everything burns. Or scalds, I guess? No, I haven't yet, Mr. Ed. I'm sorry. I spent all of Thursday working on the Cordances and... I've barely had time to sleep the last three days. Now, I will say one other thing, and this is especially to you, uh, Michael, since you're pure evil and all. Part of the problem is I've been asked a few times, you know, well, okay, how would you do it? And, and it's the Star Trek problem. You know what I mean? Or maybe you don't. Let me, let me explain that. There is no way to headcanon Star Trek together. It, it, there isn't. 
every single headcanon idea that we come up with in order to explain all the nonsense in Star Trek is contradicted by at least something somewhere. So any so one of the arguments that Trek people have gotten into for the last 50 years is I think such and such is like this and someone else would say well what about this other example that totally contradicts that and there's no answer to that question because you're right it totally contradicts it and then they say well here's my theory and then you're like well but what about this other thing that totally contradicts that and they're like oh well that you know and yeah yeah exactly it's that's And that's how it feels discussing Pokemon to me. Not in a bad way, don't mistake me. You know, I, I don't have... I haven't encountered argumentative or toxic people in Pokemon fandom yet. Not bad yet there. That's an interesting perspective, Mr. Red. One that I admittedly cannot have. If something doesn't make sense, then all I see is something that doesn't make sense. You know? All those little moments of discontinuity or illogic or contradiction, it's, it's like finding a rock in your food, you know? Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Hang on. Pull the rock out. Alright, back to the food. Nom, nom. <laughs> There's another one. It's okay. I definitely am not crazy enough to completely rewrite all of Star Trek and actually produce animated videos showcasing the rewritten Trek. I would never do that. Actually, hair in food just kills my knee more than rocks. I've had a rock in food before, but hair? Because hair hits my gag reflex, like just immediately. And so then my desire to continue eating is gone because I'm in vomit mode. That's also one of the reasons, to keep going to Star Trek on this topic, that's also one of the reasons why I tend to categorize problems with inconsistencies, you know? I mean, hey, they, they didn't use this one tech they introduced in this one episode. Well, that's irritating, but whatever. Hey, they didn't actually just think about how to use this thing, or maybe they just, they completely forgot about this character, and it's like, oh, okay, that's whatever. But the, the, the larger the severity of the contradiction, the more it bothers me. And of course, there's also the damn it, Braywin! There's also the, uh. God, I, I've lost my train of thought because Braywin died again. Uh, ah, that's it. There's the positive-negative argument, too. So let me let me try this in a different light. So let's say that there's an episode of, po of Pokemon, and it's a really, really, really good episode. It makes absolutely no sense, and actively makes other episodes worse by the virtue of the fact that none of them really acknowledge it existing. Right? Now, I'm more willing to swallow that because it turned out to be a very, very good episode. It's still egregious, I'm still going to point it out, and it still bothers me. But I'm more willing to swallow it because... You know, it, it, because it turned out a really good episode, right? Actually, I was specifically thinking of Inner Light in TNG, which is, a, which is an er example of this, as far as I'm concerned. Arguably one of the best episodes TNG ever produced, that makes no goddamn sense. And the more you think about it, the less sense it makes. And 
it comes up a grand total of twice afterwards. And in both cases, it's a minor reference, referencing something that should have been a life-changing experience. But hey, we got a good episode out of it, so that's some. Um... But for example, I can't actually list Inner Light as, you know, one of my fa or my favorite episode. Because its flaws are so bad that they drag it down, you know. Pluses minuses, right? I'll go buy some more revives. I have a feeling I'm going to need them. Pre-warp. Yeah, yeah, the Romulan War that was fought before warp. Which, ignoring the fact that that's massively contradicted, also makes no sense just on the face of it. Alright, we're gonna go to war with those people in that other space solar system over there. Hang on! Hang on, it's gonna be a couple years <laughs> before we get there. Oh my god. Sorry, you, you get the point. I, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. You get the idea. I get Mr. Red's approach, and... How do I say this without sounding insulting? Uh, there's no way to sound this without, say, say this without sounding insulting, but I don't mean this as an insult, I swear. But Mr. Red's approach is exactly why so many writers don't bother and why so many things sell, despite not making sense. Because plenty of people are like Mr. Red and don't care. They just want to have something that's, all right, that was fun, and then move on, right? See the Transformers movies for a really, really uh, er example of that. My personal favorite example, the Jurassic Worlds, which are not good films. I'm sorry. I know, Darth Tyron. It's not. It, what really bothers me is not that Jurassic World sold. That's okay, sure, whatever. It was dinosaurs. But God, they sold so well. In fact, hang on, hang on. Let's pull up the list of best selling films of all time. Oh my god! The list has changed a little bit, but Jurassic World is still the 15th best-selling film of all time. I want you to think about that. I want you to process that for a second. That's worldwide and across its run. <laughs> now, that's Jurassic World 2. Jurassic World 1 is the sixth best-selling film of all time. I... that makes me sad. That... that hurts. That physically hurts. Oh, that's horrible. Oh. <laughs> this is not adjusted for inflation, by the way. The inflation list is much weirder. And just all over the place. And I believe the inflation list is only uh, here in the States. Like, it doesn't take into account um, other, uh, other currencies, because inflation rates are variable, right? Find the inflation. 
inflation list. There we go. Adjusted, that's what they call it, the adjusted list. Yeah, so there's Gone with the Wind, which will always be on top and will never be surpassed. <laughs> that, that's never getting passed. Um, on this list, it's a little bit lower. Yeah, there it is. Jurassic World is 30th, adjusted for inflation. Honestly, I don't look at the adjusted for inflation list. Ignoring the fact that inflation doesn't actually work this way, there's also the fact that this ignores facts and, and, and information about the releases of certain films, like Gone with the Wind, which will always hold that top slot and will never be surpassed. And each year it goes by, it will just solidify that lead even more. They're the worst film screenwriters in Hollywood, and I stand by that statement with 100% certainty. They are the worst screenwriters in Hollywood. There's two of them. Uh, one of them is worse than the other. Like, one of them's an asshole, in addition to being a terrible writer. I want to say it's Robert Orkey and Alex Kurtzman, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, sure, Ice Tray, go ahead. that? Uh, uh, sure, Ice Tray, that might as well be a thing, why not? Okay, yeah, it's, it's Orky and Kurtzman. It is Orky and Kurtzman. And I don't remember which one's the terrible one. I'd have to do some Googling to figure that out. Okay, so I just got mega critted to death in two shots. With a type advantage. Robert Orkey also wrote Cowboys and Aliens. It is Orkey though. Orkey is the piece of crap. Orkey is the is the terrible person, in addition to being the terrible writer. I don't know what kind of a person Kurtzman is. I haven't seen anything from him. He deleted the message, but let me give you a... You can look at the specifics if you want to know the details, Bio. So, allow me to give you the general gist. Someone posted a rather reasoned and normal c critique about Star Trek. This is one example, by the way. Orky is known for being just a jackass, but this, this is probably the most public example. Um, and when I say normal critique, I don't mean, like, trolling or toxic or this movie sucks. It was... Here's a critique of the movie, yada 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 yada, and I think this could be repaired here, and I think this could be done there. His response was something I can't say out loud because it involves a lot of cussing. But um, <laughs> yeah, Orky's just. Oof.
Yeah, no, this this is this was far, this was not red letter media territory. This is just someone saying, "Hey, here's a critique of the movie." Thank you very much, Noel, for 23 months. You are awesome. Much obliged. If you know where you'd like to put that, please let me know. Yeah, honestly, the more I look at things like, you know, celebrities or politicians who use social media in a manner that it should not be used in, I think it's the nicest way I could say that, I wonder what's wrong with those people. And I, I'm sorry, I don't have a nicer way to say that. Do you not have an internal filter? Do you not think that you are putting out a public statement that can and will be viewed by thousands of people when you're doing this? Does it not occur to you to consider tone when it comes to things like punctuation spelling to get across the, the type of message you're trying to say? What is wrong with you? Well, of course, it's a fully all right frickin' here. I will admit I do have a opinion on that, and that opinion is the more public you are, the more you should think about what you're saying, and the more you should think about how you say it. Now, that is my opinion. I, I, that's not something I would consider codified fact, but, you know, the more in the public eye you are, I think the more responsibility you have to moderate yourself, right? But even if that is not true, you'd think they'd have the ability to moderate themselves to the level of, say, a normal person... Just an ordinary individual. I suppose that's fair, loner. I, I can't even argue against that, it's just weird. Although, in my defense, I'm not saying that I think they should lie. Like, even if I was a mega super famous person, I wouldn't lie. But there's a difference between saying... I, I'm, I'm trying to think of an actual example that doesn't involve cussing. <laughs> there's a difference between what these people do and honestly giving your opinion, you know what I mean? There's, there's a distinction there. I'm not going to use it because I can't because the rules of this particular challenge, but totally going for that. one. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Bio. There are ways to be honest without being a dick. It's, it's, that's really the, my core point there. Which I say in response to Loner. I suppose you, uh, you could still argue that you know, if a politician doesn't know how to be honest without being a dick, maybe that's something we should know! <laughs> but I'm drifting too much into Halloween territory here. Yeah, like, Michael and I disagree about the Arceus thing, for example. But we're not being dicks about it. We just disagree on the matter, and we discuss the whys and the wherefores. Frankly, I actually get your point, Michael. I totally understand why you look at it that way. At least I think I do. I should assume. There is tons of evidence that Arceus is the god of the new world! Or, I, I mean, I mean... He's eating a potato chip! Or, I, I mean... Look, you know what I mean. Thank <laughs> you. 
You know it would be really funny. <laughs> Turns out the whole Pokemon setting is actually like a simulation or something. <laughs> it would explain everything. The kid's like, hey, I want to go play Pokemon Gold. Okay, honey, be back in time for dinner. And then the 10 year old kid goes on the holodeck. <laughs> and goes off and plays Pokemon. <laughs> And all of the sudden, just everything makes sense. Everything. Yeah, it, it, it turns out it's actually a video game. Guys, guys, Pokemon's a video game. Lid blown. Did they really bio? I'm joking! Are they, would, did they really want to go that route with it? Oh. Ash has always been in a coma. It makes, it makes so much sense! Wake up, sheeple! Oh, I'm done, I'm done. Is that a grass-type deer? I mean, yeah, there's evidence for it in lore. At one point, Pikachu beats a frickin' Onyx. Give me a break. Sorry, I know, that's, that's a little old. And, that's true, and a ride on. curiosity, because I've only seen the first film. It's the only Pokemon film I ever saw. The, the Mewtwo one. So which ones I choose you? Or I suppose more accurately, what, what does it do that proves that Pikachu is secretly the god of this world? So the challenge we're using is kind of a weird one, Smurfikins. It's a brand new one. Um, the, the way we're doing the challenge here is I have to use Pokemon I haven't used before. And I can't go out of my way to get specific Pokemon. So my team's a little weird. But that that's that's yeah. I'm kinda legging it so far. It's a good way to branch out. Cause you know, I've used a bunch of these. Like I actually need to get rid of this Litwick because, you know, I have actually used that before, but you know, these four over here are all newbies. They were always the chosen ones. Chosen by Arceus! Er, I mean... No, they were chosen by the true god of Pokémon. Shuckle! Ah, hey, Colgrim. Yes, you put money towards something. Uh, Fable 3. Which has been frickin' pulled, which irritates the piss out of me. Not the only game that's been pulled from digital distribution. It was only a single sub, but I, I do still want to get a hold of people, so yes! Ooh, Crosscode has DLC. I didn't think they were continuing to develop it. I figured they moved on to the next thing. So I'm gonna readdress that to... Congrim. Crusader Kings 3. I tried today, Colgrim. I did. You could check the VOD. I was doing it while I was live. The answer is no. Now, it might come back at some point because it's gone up and gone down, I think, what was it, three times? So that might be why that that issue was so, you know, there, why there was such an inconsistency. But, um, 
as of right now, it's not there, and I'm not gonna roll the dice on that, so... Sorry. If it makes you feel any better, it's not the only game that got axed today. Because I did a, an audit and discovered there were several games where we had issues like that. You know, Shikor, the problem with that is... Stupidity, I think, is the nicest way I could put that. Most of the time, when you put a game up for digital distribution, you the way it works is you have... I don't remember the legal term. I can agree with that. This is very Chrono Trigger music. The, the, the non-legal term is you have a continuing contract versus a static contract. Now, I don't know what the legal term is there. Please forgive me. A continuing contract is really simple. It's there until it's canceled, right? Like, think of it like a subscription. It's it's just you're subscribed until you're not, right? Most uh, game developers... Excuse me. Most game developers do exactly that. They, they, they put up the game on Steam or whatever, and it's just there until they pull it. Then there's some companies, looking at you, Act Blizzard, who will say, yeah, we'll put the game up for... And they specifically signed a deal to put it up for a year. And what usually happens is they don't renew that deal after the year is up. So it's not pulled so much as Steam no longer has the rights to sell the game. And Active Blizzard has no interest in renewing it because why would they? That's insanity. I mean, we'd have to pay pennies for the storage we're using there. And the off chance we might, you know, have it sell at some point in the future offsetting an entire year's worth of storage. Look, I, I know people like to overemphasize how expensive storage is. Allow me to verify. Storage is as cheap as it has ever been. It would literally cost pennies a year to just have files just sit there. And, assuming nobody actually accessed them. And if someone did access them, then that would cost a few more pennies. It's one of the reasons the concept of maintenance mode exists for online games, because at a certain point, it costs so little to keep them going, they just let it... let it play. That's true, we need to think of those shareholders, those pennies! Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry, that's my chair being weird. That's a good example, yeah, Horan. Probably not, Mr. Ed. Although, in fairness, as I just said, if VTMB1 sold a copy, and this is not an exaggeration, that would probably pay for its yearly expenditures of, of, of maintaining it up there, of maintaining it on the store. I want to stress, this is not hyperbole or exaggeration. The overhead, once everything's set up, is minuscule. It's one of the reasons it always pisses me off so much when certain MMOs uh, shut down, go out of maintenance mode. Because in most cases, there's not really a good reason, even financially, to do that. <laughs> Yeah, not that I'm technically allowed to make a stance on that because I'm a streamer, Doom Rider, but let's just say that I completely agree with you on that. Listen, this makes perfect sense, Murphykins. I, I, I don't see any problems here. Yeah, one thing that I am legitimately flabbergasted by is that more companies have not deliberately embraced the release it for free strategy. There, a couple of companies have done that. But let me let me give you a direct example. How much money do you think Blizzard makes off of Warcraft 2 right now? Now, if tomorrow Blizzard was like, hey, Warcraft 2 is free for, for free, Here's the here's the lake. Download away. 
Now, they obviously wouldn't make any money off of that, and it would cost them a small amount in order to, you know, distribute that. But how much goodwill do you think Blizzard would generate by just saying, yeah, here's, here's Warcraft 2? Lore was dragged out. Yeah, ain't that the truth. I mean, honestly, I could think of a lot of games where that probably should be done. Yeah, it would literally be advertising. You could literally put that under the marketing budget. <laughs> Just wrong with you people. I have no idea, Mr. Red. Sadly, I do not have... Would you stop making me switch Pokemon? Oh, gotcha, Colgrim. That's weird, but thank you for checking. <laughs> Now, in some cases, there's difficulty in doing that, really. There are. Like, uh, let me use a direct example. Marble Madness, which is an NES game. That's a little bit trickier. Because when it comes to some older games, it comes down to one of those wonderful gray areas of, who actually owns this? Because a lot of rights and ownership things just kind of have bounced around between companies. In some cases, dozens of companies for the better part of 30 years now. So who owns Marble Madness? This is actually one of the, I, I would argue, the only good reason to not have all of the NES uh, library be on the Switch, right? Because in many cases, it's, it's not a matter of getting the game physically on the Switch. That's easy. It's not a game of getting people interested or distributing it. That's easy. It's a matter of, who owns the rights to Marble Madness? Or, you know, whatever individual specific game it is. Now, I would still pursue that if I was in charge of Nintendo. Or Sony or whoever. I would still pursue that. I would actually have a team of people whose job it is to hunt down, to, to sort through the paperwork and figure out who owns these games, get a hold of them and say, we want your legal right to put this on, you know, the Nest Store. If no one owns it, that's tricky. <laughs> but what would happen then is a brief legal movement, because there's, there's precedence for this, by Nintendo, who owns the NES and who owns the distribution for it and is the person who, the group, excuse me, the entity, who most benefits from its usage and uh, operation, would technically, by simple legal matter then, own it. You know, they, they would effectively claim ownership because they could legally prove they have a reason to have ownership. And since nobody would be opposing it, that would basically be a... Like, that, that wouldn't even be a trial. That would be one of those things where you... The judge... I've seen this happen in real life. It's actually hysterical. The judge just does, says a whole bunch of stuff for the sake of, you know, legality. And then signs the document and says case closed, and then moves on to the next one on the docket, and then just and just rapid fires through stuff like that. And that's what would happen. There'd be like five of those on the judge's desk, and he would just say, "This court of such and such district, this time at this time, uh, judge such and such presiding, this person present, this person witnessing. This is the case via this entity against this entity for the ownership of this. Sign, sign, sign. Case is closed. Move on." It's really boring, but kind of fascinating to watch. Anyways. That's probably what would happen in the case of a nobody owns it anymore. I don't know why I keep mentioning Marble Madness. I think it's just because it's on the list, and if I look to my left here, I can see it right there. Because I got my NES games on my left here. Nah, go ahead. We're an hour out, Bio, but if you want to have dinner, go for it. Run, Sierra Mike. Run! Did I ever buy repels? I bought repels, right? Oh, 
Part of the other problem, admittedly, is there's a difference between owning something, owning the rights to make money off of something, owning the rights to distribute something, owning the rights to make something derivative of something. Like, all of these are distinct legal definitions. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big mess. I... Uh, I'm in favor of complex solutions. I always have been, but I really do feel we're at the point where we need to etch a sketch copyright law and just start over. Yeah, exactly, eclectic. Ooh, she has guessed we're a Pokemon trainer. I knew it, Kira, white noise. Yeah, oh god, it's the frickin' Usharna. Ah. Die! Die, you monster! Son of a submariner. Fine. Oscar. I just noticed Oscar isn't my nuclear option anymore. All three of my top Pokemon are all in my mid 30s. Or all in the mid 30s. That's that's the price we must pay, Shikor. We lose Mario. But we also lose copyright law. <laughs> yes, good guess. You guessed that I was a Pokemon trainer. Still nine? Eight or nine years out from that, but. Like, I unironically have that on my calendar because I'm very curious how they're gonna approach it. I mean, the most. the easiest and most logical thing is they're just gonna try and extend it again. Even though we're already at the point of infinity plus one. But we'll see. We'll see what they do. That's true, Shikor. That is a valid point. That's one of the reasons why I uh, bother to buy games. I, like, that's why we've got the new policy, because there's several games I own on Steam that you can't get anymore. Bio. Oh, that's sooner than I thought, Malakor. My bad. I know it was soon-ish, I just didn't know it was that soon. It's the same copy I had back in the day, I say, Ross. And it's right over there. Because the SNES games are on the right bin. I know you can't see me playing it. Yeah, most of my cartridges and stuff that I own, I have owned. Like I said, the reason I'm missing so many games from PS1, PS2, PS3 is because that's when I was living in a ditch or sharing games across the group, respectively. 
like I said earlier, you know, we collectively as a group had one copy of such and such, and only a couple of those were mine. Think about it, it fits. You are the second person to say that in like 10 minutes, I say, Ross. Oh wow, see that? That used to be a human being, and that mask is an, em an emulation of their human form. Or that's a bunch of nonsense, take your pick. Pokemon I'm actually trying to get in here, which I haven't seen yet. <laughs> you jackass. Oh, whatever. Being confused. I'm not even going to talk about music copy wrong. Let's, let's just, you know, let's just walk away from that topic. I know, right, Sierra Mike? It's like, would, would, could you stop killing yourself, please? Must kill self. Must emulate master. No, wait, I haven't killed myself yet. That counts. But you wish to, Master. You wish to. No! Worst part of this game, Volcarona. Hard to argue. I misread that at first. I thought he said, I'm here to end the world. No, yeah, that, that sounds about right, Malachor. Considering. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if there's some movies scheduled for around then to specifically help legally combat that. Here's an interesting question. What Pokemon has the highest evolution level? You know, evolves the latest. Because 
I know there's several in the 40s range, which isn't terrible. There's a couple 50s. Uh, three times that I know of Shikor. There might have been more. I don't even know when Easter is, S.A. Ross. So if that answers you, then that answers you. That's why I don't use those pseudo legendaries. Good God. No, really, I, I, th I think I mentioned that earlier. That is exactly why I've never used Tyranitar. And Tyranitar isn't that bad. Yep, Hydreigon evolves from its pre-evolved form at the highest level of all Pokémon that evolve by leveling up at 64. Yeesh. Yeah, me too, Ice Tray. I kind of hope the remake is good, too, the, the Gen 4 remake. Uh, hang on, where's Jar Garchomp? Garchomp is 48. As I say, I knew it was a one of the 40s ones. I think Garchomp is actually the only one of the 40s evolves that I've used, seriously. What's Tyranitar? I get me curious. Tyranitar is 55! Yikes. Anyways, one movie trailer that has the weirdest magic for it? Like, a magical type? Like, you know, casting spells and stuff? I mean, getting a, uh... Uh, Larvitar is easy, but getting a Tyranitar, ugh. Oh, oh, gotcha, weirdest music. Um, actually, I do have an answer for you right off the top of my head. In fact, it made me not see this film in theaters, and I regret that. Mad Max Fury Road. You know, I'm not sure I've ever gotten a Dragonite except for filling out a Pokedex purpose. Yeah, I thought the music choice in the Mad Max Fury Road trailer was just weird. And I didn't care for it. And again, it didn't make... It, I, I didn't play it. I didn't watch it, rather. Until I watched it for the show and was like, well, this is a really good film. <sighs> Yeah, we're up to three people now who have made the Chrono Trigger comment about this place. It's getting weird. Wow, Bregwin is now my highest level Pokemon. It's... Huh. Whatever, let's keep shoving X down her throat. Shove, shove, shove. She, of course, got crit. Why wouldn't she? Let me send out Lore. I will die for Franklin. Yeah, you know what? I agree, Nethrius. I should take a drink here. Whoops. Most annoying status condition in Pokemon is Confuse. I don't even have to think about that. It 
hurts itself in the confusion. Because screw you. Ugh. I die. For Franklin. The Paralyzed was actually going to be my second pick. But I'm still going to pick Confusion first. Oh, wow, Roxy. That's horrible. I'm sorry. Hey, Statum. Statum? Statum? Thank you very, very much for the sub. As always, much obliged. Give me a second. I'm going to get this attack off. And I'm going to put that down for Portal 1. There we go. I will admit that it... It's hard for me to... Like, from a design perspective, it's hard for me to talk about... Uh, status effects in turn-based games because they're usually irritating. Not interesting, not changes up the strategy or adds new tactical combos. They're usually just irritating, you know what I mean? But that's because most of the time they're designed to just prevent you from doing stuff without actually accomplishing anything. In short, you know, you... you you're playing tag with someone, and you've caught them, but they're on the other side of the chair, and so they just go left, and then right, and then left, and you're like, I'm going to tag you. There's no other way out of this room. I have won this encounter, but you're just delaying me. Now, there are some exceptions to that. You know, Poison is actually a pretty good exception to that. As, I've, as, as I have done on camera before, I have literally beaten Mewtwo with a combination of Poison and Burn. But that's different, those are dots. Yeah, I, I agree with Roxy. Restrict to status effects that restrict certain types of actions? Sure, I mean, we already have those in Pokemon. You know, we already have abilities that are like, you can't do this move next round, or you can't use the same move twice in a row, for example, right? And that's substantially less irritating than, you know, you're, you're, you're paralyzed, screw you. Hell, paral paralysis already has a bad enough side effect for pushing you. I forget the exact mechanics of how it works, but, you know, it, it makes you go second no matter what. Except I think it does something to your speed. I forget the mechanics, but you, go, you know what I mean. It slows you down, which is already a bad enough status effect. It cuts its speed in half. There you go. I knew it was pretty bad. Hey, Junior Shire. What is up? Are you on the list? Double check, double check, double check. Nope. There is no Junior Shire. You're safe. This time. Yeah, Silence and Blind are a good example of that. Um, you know what, let's just, let's just go back down and heal. And yeah, that's another thing. Status effects are would be substantially more interesting if they were more combo-y. Which, once again, reminds me of something that I regret about Pokémon uh, ever since they first introduced double battles. More double battles, please? Like, there's so much awesome, cool stuff you can do with regards to combos and tactics and builds that once you have two Pokémon, that you can use at the same time. But they're so inconsistent. <laughs> and in some of the games, they're barely present. Like, I'm, I'm not even joking when I say that if they if, if the next Pokemon game, if, if either, uh, if, if Pokemon Arceus, every battle was a double battle, and like the triple battles were the unique ones, I think that would be awesome. And that, I think that would be cool, personally, to, uh, to, you know, to to adjust my build and my team layout because, oh, well, I'm always going to have a second Pokemon there. Huh. 
I mean, there are types and abilities that benefit that. You mean the ones that I can't play that I just axed from the list, Baron? Those ones? But yeah, I, I get your point. No matter how far things are away... No matter how far things are away, a pilot's eyes can see them. Rainbow Dash? Oh, that's right. Since you've come this far, why don't you ring the bell? Celestial Tower's bell is for soothing the spirits of Pokémon. Also, the character of the person ringing the bell is reflected in its sound. Bong. Oh, absolutely, frickin lutely Colgrim. Although, Pokémon Conquest is a terrible game, but I still think they could do it properly. I mean, I think the XCOM format could fit just about any game, and I know that because I've played Mario Rabbids. The sound of the bell reverberates through the area. What a pretty sound. You are a kind and strong person. I am not strong. It's that kind of sound. I'd like to introduce myself again. I am Skyla, leader of Mist Mistralton's Pokemon Gym. I use flying-type Pokemon. When you are ready, please come to the gym. I'll give you a big welcome. Okay. I know, S.A. Ross. It was, though. It was such a good game. I loved Mario Plus Rabbids. I mean, it had its flaws, but... Whoa. But yeah, for those of you not aware, uh, there is actually a Pokemon XCOM game. It's called Pokemon Conquest. It's on the DS. And, in my opinion, it sucks. Which is a damn shame. <laughs> hey, Shadow Claw. I really don't. I mean, if it's on the website, it was in the current method, but there is still a DLC we haven't reviewed regardless. Hi, Sean. Let's see. Nope, Sean is not on the list. We're good. Every name that pokes in, I'm just like, are they on the list? Are they on the list? No. I saw an item over there, but I think I just saw her hair. Man, I'm in the mood for playing Chrono Trigger for some reason. Good evening, DJ Flick. Welcome back. Been shoving X down Bregwin's throat. Let's see how she manages, shall we? I'm God, I don't know what I'm gonna have for dinner. Yes, this gym is an airport eclectic. I like the themed gyms, I, I'll admit it. Safe! Or should I say safe? Super safe. <laughs> I don't have crate. 
grapes. I'll probably just have a protein shake. It's a pretty normal dinner for me. I don't actually eat much. Oh yeah, you want to hear something that I guess is either good or depressing, depending on how you look at it? Ah, it's fine. There's no lawyers in Pokemon. That's why it's a paradise. Oh god, maybe that's the reason the Pokemon world is a better world. It's not the Pokemon. It's the lack of the lawyers. Anyways. I, re I recently had an actual doctor uh, look at me and be like, Am I fat? No. What do you think their response was? a few weeks ago. Only if I don't eat, DJ Flick. So, the answer was... no. <laughs> Which... I'm like, but... And, and, I, and I pointed to, like, my stomach, and I'm like, look, there's there's fat right here, and there's fat right there, and he's like, yeah, and then he pointed to something I'm not going to show you, but without flexing, if you looked at me, and I didn't have a shirt on, you can actually see the definition of my muscles on my stomach right now. I don't have a six-pack, but that's because I have too much muscle. In short, the amount of fat I have, relative to the amount of muscle I have, which is quite a lot, is actually healthy. And, you know, we had a discussion about that. And it boiled down to, you know, if you want to be smaller, you're going to have to lose muscle. Because your body is naturally maintaining this in order to deal with things. And I'm like... And the reason I say this could be considered something that is depressing is because it means, I mean, on the, on the one hand, it means I've basically succeeded. All the crap I've been doing for years now, at this point, you know, I did the regular exercise and the stretch breaks and the, uh, you know, the, the, the proper dis trying to actually build muscle rather than cosmetic muscle and all that fun stuff has actually succeeded. On the downside, it means if I want to be skinny, I'm gonna have to be skinny. I'm gonna have to shed all of this, and that's not only gonna take years, at least to do it healthily, that's gonna suck when I get there. Or I could continue to be the guy who can, you know, uproot trees in the backyard of my sister. Or my sister's backyard, you know what I mean. I'm not sure what I think of that. Yeah, exactly. Would I rather be muscular or would I rather be skinny? And that's just a strange question that's never actually been on my radar before. I could probably, there's no probably, I could 100% uh, look better temporarily at the cost of my health if I cut, which involves drastically reducing my food and water intake temporarily and doing specific types of exercises. And then, you know, it'll normalize once I stop doing that. But for obvious reasons, I don't particularly want to start cutting water you know? Anyways, what do I think of the idea of Star Trek LARPing with fully functional things? What do you mean? Oh, I see what I'm doing. Oh yeah, cutting is super unhealthy. The Hollywood diet is actually kind of disgusting, really. Like, the more you look into it, the more you realize it is astonishingly unhealthy. I actually saw a joke uh, thing once, which was like, man, I wish I had, you know, the build of a 
uh, uh, Captain Rogers, and someone's like, yeah, you could do that. All you have to do is do this. And it's like, whoa. Yep, hang on, we're not done. What? It gets worse? Oh, yeah. Not only Tom Hanks, uh, Christian Bale does that, too. And, uh, what's the guy who plays Star-Lord? Uh, Chris Pratt. He's gone up and down, too, which is just, it, it's astonishingly unhealthy. Those people are going to have long-term, you know, health problems, kidney problems, heart problems, liver problems. Uh, yeah, I think I would agree with that, Zach, though. Anyway, sorry, Eclectic. Um, so, LARPing... Star Trek LARPing with fully functional... I don't understand your question, I'm sorry, do you mind clarifying? Can afford those problems. I don't know about you. I think I'd rather just not have to take three different pills and hook myself up to a dialysis machine every other Wednesday, you know? <laughs> Funnily enough, Patrick Stewart and other actors like him do the skinny approach that I was just referencing. Because there is a way to just go skinny. You know, you, you diet down and you change you, you change and do very specific types of exercises, which are more, more about keeping your body functioning rather than building, right? And your muscle just kind of slowly edges away as the fat is slowly bled away, and then you just kind of maintain that. You just stay skinny. I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound dismissive, but it is easier to do the skinny diet, especially when you have the money to back it, than it sounds. It's just you have to commit to it, that's all. No, I know, Malakor. Oh, Patrick Stewart looks good for his age. Ow! Well, my nose does. Ah. Jesus, Sierra Mike. I mean, I believe you completely. That's everything we've been talking about. <laughs> I didn't need that nose anyways. R wrong thing. Where's my... E I have an ether left. I actually have one ether left. Yep, there it is. One ether. Uh, discharge. Why? What's a lawyer? I'm telling you, there's no lawyers in this setting. It's okay, we're 14 in this particular game. That makes it okay. Did you enjoy flying with the help of the Mistralton gym cannons? Hang on, let me let me unbreak my nose. They're my pride and joy. This time let's try something else. Sexy! Oh wait, you didn't mean that. So look at her outfit. Just look at it. The longer you look at it, the worse it looks. Like, wait, what? You but at what? But... I mean, I'd take Lenora over her, I'm just saying. what the female protagonist wears. Uh, hang on, let me find a picture here. Yeah. Oh god. I don't remember the name of the character. Let's try this.
there we go. Okay, so player character. There's Lucas, Don, May. Is this Hilda? This would be Hilda then. <laughs> I mean, that's a completely normal outfit. And then you look at her pockets, and it's like. You. I mean, the shorts are too short, but what the hell is going on with your pockets? At least Rosa is wearing something more like, you know, a normal outfit, but then Rosa has strange hair. I should probably defeat Skyla here. Good job, Ragman. All that experience we shoved down your throat worked. Now you got me looking at all their outfits. Who's this? Is this Gen 3? Oh, that's Platinum. So Platinum's outfit is okay. Dawn's. Although the skirt's too short. Damn it. Damn it, they all look terrible. Why do they all look terrible? Actually, hang on, hang on. Serena's not bad. Okay, Serena's not bad. Nice hat, actual outfit, skirt isn't super short, has stockings, I guess that's whatever, but nothing weird about her outfit. There you go, normal person. Anyways, you're an amazing Pokemon trainer. My Pokemon are happy, because for the first time in a while, we could fight with our full strength. This is an official League Gym Badge. I think it'll look good on you. Leaf looks a lot like Serena, actually, just younger. Looking at it. Oh, hot stuff. With that many gym badges, you can have up to level 70. And here's this TM Acrobatics. I mean, yeah, I, I looked at the picture for Victor, which is apparently the uh, sword and shield guy, and I was like, that's not what my guy looks like. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, customization. Plasma, we're heading for the city. Oh no. Crystals? Oh, Chris. Yeah, she's she's pretty good. She's got shorts on, which is nice. Uh. Well, how do I get out of your gym, Skyla? Just get in the cannon behind me. Ah! I didn't need those legs anyways. They may say it is for understanding one another better, but what trainers really use battles for is to compete. They hurt each other's Pokémon. Am I the only one who finds this terribly painful? Whatever. I'm gonna talk to your Pokémon. I've been living with Pokémon since I was born, so it's easier for me to talk with them than people. Because Pokémon never tell lies. Ever, 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 ever. Ever. Hey, Zebstraka. Would you tell him what kind of trainer runner is? Well, you see, he has me die repeatedly, but he made up for it by constantly shoving experience down my throat. Okay, okay, got it. So runner was born in Nevema, lives with mom, given a Pokedex, start a journey. Still trust you for some reason. I mean, that's good. If every person in Pokemon cared about one another like you two do, I could watch over the future of people in Pokemon without having to liberate Pokémon from people who just use them. <sighs> Getsis is using Team Plasma to search for some special stones. The Light Stone and the Dark Stone. These stones hold the essence of the two legendary Pokémon. One of them is totally not in the museum back earlier on. It is said that when they lost their physical form, they fell into a slumber and were transformed. Now they await for the hero's arrival. I shall resurrect a legendary dragon-type Pokémon from one of these stones and become its friend. That will show the world that I am the new hero, 
Everyone will follow what I say. <sighs> My vision is to change the world without using force. Trying to change the world by force will just make others resist. If people resist, the ones that'll be hurt are innocent Pokémon, used by foolish trainers. You understand. People are not just tools for people to use. Or Pokémon are just tools. As a result, Pokémon and trainers who care about each other, like you and your Pokémon, will be separated. And that does break my heart. A little. I like it too, Roxy. It makes for a good balance, and yin and yang is one of the main themes of this work, so hey, I'm with it. So, do I do anything on the side of streaming to make money? Well, I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I sell my body for sex every other Thursday. But otherwise, no. I'm secretly the horror runner. <laughs> what? Whoops! Oh god, no! It's okay, I have a giant chest, Baron. It forms a defensive shield against Twitch pants. <laughs> oh my god. You're trying to kill me here. Ah. Mm, vegetables. Not really, Bio. I mean, realism and idealism are a little bit different than truth and ideals. I mean, there's similarities, obviously, but we're talking about gradients at that point, right? Nuance. This is your mom. Yes, I know who you are, mom. How are you doing? Oh, you're already on Route 7? You've gone quite far. How are you Pokemon? You can't get that far all by yourself, you know. Don't forget to take care of your Pokemon. Take care. Senior Trainer Mom, signing off. Still don't actually have a flyer. I may just go through the whole game without a flyer at this rate, Jesus. I was wondering where we were, so I lose track a little bit. So, Dragon Spiral is where I could get my frickin' flyer, right? I think? And yes, I am DJ Flick. I need one more. French onion soup? Actually, I do. But only as long as it's in a really big sourdough bl bread bowl of awesome. It has to be of awesome.
Man, I wouldn't go in there even with Iron Man suits, I'd have to. Besides, at that point, you're just flying around, aren't you? I mean, sure, why not, Gum Gum? I, I, I mean, ugh, but... Depends on how much I'm paid. The Horror Runner isn't cheap. Oh yeah, I should be prepping for my next gym. <laughs> now that Bregwin swept that place. I should be thinking about my Elite Four at this point, really. I could technically probably swap out Oscar at this point and get another one in, but I'd need someone else I haven't used yet. Having some ice damage wouldn't exactly go amiss. Not off the top of my head, no, Eclectic. Yeah, I know. Ice is next, then Dragon. Um. One way or another, I need to start leveling Venters. He hasn't even evolved yet. What, 35 for this? Yeah, so a couple more levels for ventures. Well, by definition, simply saying truth means. Truth is binary. It is true or it isn't, right? Except that's not true at all. But my point is truth either exists or is added, thus making it binary. By d therefore, by virtue, if truth is added to the situation, then it has to be, an, by nature, something that is changing you, right? I'm explaining this terribly, but I hope you at least get the idea. Because if it's truth you already knew, then it's not truth being added. If it's truth that is new, then it is truth that inspires change, by, by simple existence. Now, ideals is the opposite. Ideal starts from a point of change, whereas truth invokes change later. Your ideal says, I must do this, therefore you seek to do this. Truth is, again, you are, I, I'm, I'm taking truth in the game as truth that is added, not truth that exists. Those are two different things. So thus, truth that is added, aka knowledge, that is gained leads to new understanding, which leads to change. And yeah, in, in both cases, it leads to change and progress. That's the funny part. And I'm pretty sure they did that on purpose. I'm pretty sure they actually thought that out. Where am I? I'm on Route 7. Is there anything here I could catch? Oh, let's see. Unova, Route 7. Something that only is there in winter. Oh, that's gross. Um, Cub Chew is gross, I'm just saying. It looks like there's nothing here. Okay, whatever. occurs to me, I hate to do this, but I don't need Oscar anymore. He's actually been out-leveled. So Oscar doesn't need to drag me anymore, right? So I could complete the challenge, now that I've finished being carried, and remove Oscar and uh, Chandelure here. And that gives me two slots to work with. I still want my flyer, but I'm debating what I want for my other slot. 
Twist Mountain has nothing. Okay, well, that's, that's good to know. Not really anyways. Yeah, time, time to wait a month. Sorry. Oh god, if the timing of this run is correct, we might actually see a seasonal change. We might not. Because that's about like next or Thursday or something like that. I oh, never mind. That, yeah, that's next Thursday. We probably won't. We probably won't. I actually sincerely doubt we won't be done with this game by Thursday. It's not that long. Reject your truth, your ideals, and your change. I'm, I'm a music label, if you can't tell. <laughs> Movies I regret watching. So, you know that series of comedy movies? Which are, uh, it's, it's like scary movie and horror movie, disaster movie. It's a series. And they're crap. And I actually saw one of those, I think it was Scary Movie 2, in the theaters. And I, I'm sure I've seen less funny films that were trying to be funny in my life. But I can't think of any off the top of my head. It was so aggressively unfunny. No, DJ Flick. In fact, I just finished Enterprise, so I'm not watching any shows at all. Master of Disguise? No, I haven't seen that. I like Airplane well enough, although there's several jokes there that don't land for me either. But then again, even Mel Brooks films have jokes that don't land for me. Or whatever. A show I recommend. Af uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I actually like bad jokes, Malachor. <laughs> you probably know that since you've watched me. But, like, there's a difference between bad jokes and just... What is this crap? You know? It's always a Molga. Shows I would recommend. I suppose I could recommend some recent shows and be safe, but I haven't seen them. So I have no idea if they're any good or not. And Ventures is dead. Well, I'd recommend MLP, absolutely, but I don't think Colin Palooza would like MLP. Too much continuity and good storytelling, and actually talk tackling adult issues, I don't think he'd be into that. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it, Baron. I don't know, just go watch Witcher, Colin Close. Everyone else likes it. It's probably good.
or WandaVision. The Westworld. Yeah, whatever's new is probably good. Actually, you know what show I can actually recommend? Hey, I got one, I got one. Breaking Bad. Go ahead and watch that. Breaking Bad is hysterical because I talk so much about the difference between front-loaded storytelling and back-loaded storytelling. Breaking Bad is mostly back-loaded storytelling, but you wouldn't know it from watching it. They do a really good job of trying to make you think they planned everything out. They didn't. <laughs> oh yeah, there's also Mandalorian, which is supposed to be good. I can recommend Rebels with an asterisk. Yeah, I can't actually be him. I'm not good at chemistry. But I do break Mega. This is the purest Mega you've ever seen. Clone Wars? Eh, yeah, okay. More asterisks. Clone Wars has more bad in it. And more filler in it. But there is still some really good stuff in Clone Wars. So, yes is my answer to that. Do I have to go north? I guess I do. Okay, whatever. Oh, grass. Or I could get an encounter, that's great. Uh, the asterisk for Rebels is it goes back and forth between being a really good Star Wars show and a stupid kids show. And it really does just bounce back and forth between those two extremes. Okay, fine, Sharon. Oh yeah, I can actually recommend Young Justice. That's another good one. DCAU is harder to recommend just because there's it's not like you could just fire up Disney Plus and watch the D DCAU. And watching the whole DCAU involves getting a list showing which shows to watch in which order and then procuring each of them individually and separately. And a lot of them are not digitally available. At least last I checked, which admittedly was a little while ago, but you get my point. I wouldn't recommend Saturday Night Live for the last 40 years. If you go back that far, sure. And have I watched the Snyder Cut? No, I don't exactly have four hours of spare time in my life right now. I've barely been able to sleep properly the last couple of days. But yeah, Young Justice, it's a singular show. It's much easier to get a hold of. And it's good. It, it is basically the DC show. You know, it, it crams a lot of stuff into a small area. But it's good. I can recommend that. Never heard of it, DJ Flick, sorry. I just control my dreams. Or have horrific nightmares. One of the two. Stargate SG-1? Yeah. Battlestar Galactica? Now, I hated that show, but it's a good show. At least until a certain point. Firefly? I can't stand Firefly, so... Someone else answer that one. Nightmares are better than good dreams, yes. But I'd still rather not have nightmares. I'd rather have just neutral dreams. Which, I actually have quite a few of those. What's wrong with Firefly? Other than the fact that it was aired out of a, a order. Um, Reavers. <laughs> I, I mean, I could actually give you a list, but honestly, I could just stop right there.
How was the nightmare better? After a nightmare, when you wake up, it was just a nightmare. After a good dream, when you wake up, it was just a good dream. Honestly, I can I can say that Firefly is probably a good show. I can say that. It's not my thing. You know, it's, it's there's just not a lot there for me. But that being stated, I think that the main reason, and I don't mean any insult to anybody who likes Firefly, by the way, with this, but I think the main reason Firefly took off and exploded the way it did was because it was cut off. To explain what I mean by that, just a little bit. Imagine, if you will, if Star Trek the original series, only got three seasons instead of the original planned amount, and was suddenly cut off after season three, and you already see where I'm going with this, because this is exactly what actually happened. That's actually a bad example. I could probably come up with a better example. Um... Yeah, yeah, it got Streisand. Star Trek's actually a bad example. I'm gonna rescind that one. But ima yeah, imagine from Babylon 5 is probably a better example. Imagine if Babylon 5 had its first season. Remember how season 1 ends of Babylon 5? And then imagine it just... That's it. It's the end. If you could picture that, you could probably understand why Firefly probably got so much damn attention. And thus press, and thus interest, and thus people liking it. But it's in the champ champion Alder. I'm weak, so I lost. And honestly, it bothers me when you call it a fine battle despite that. Oh, honestly, Sharon. Just accept the compliment without a sting in the remark. I've asked you this before, but what do you plan on doing after you become strong? If I get strong and become champion, that will be the reason for my existence. I want to prove I'm really living. Oh, you remind me of Marshall. Of course, having something you want is, is important. But what is even more important is what you do with your newfound power. Anyway, take this. Here, yeah, you two. Surf! Not sure who that's gonna go on yet, but whatever. If you use it, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't forget about the needs of the Pokemon at your sides. To do with my power. I don't know the answer to that yet. First, I gotta get strong, so I, everyone will acknowledge that power. Anyways, next time I will win, and eventually I'll become a gym leader. Which is kinda cool, actually. Let's not go into that right now. Uh, hmm. No! Immediately screw up. I even slowed down so I wouldn't screw up. Ah! Okay, apparently I can't do this going slow. Oh my god. I've been doing this perfectly this whole freaking time, and I just suddenly cannot walk on the walkways. Good morning, Scion of the Emperor. Thank you very much for the donations for Alice and Alice. I have bought both games. Well, I bought... I own one of them. The other one will be here sometime in the next two months. Just, you know, used game stores. Well, you see, Bio. No, that's the point. I mean, that is actually the point. Charon... I'm tempted to add Charon as a positive to story, because he's... Uh, he's Fight Club. H hear me out a second. What I mean by that is he doesn't actually know who he is or what he wants. He doesn't have a core, is what I like to call that. And so he thinks, well, I'll become the champion. I'll become this super amazing Pokemon person, because that's a good thing, and lots of people like it, and it'll be awesome. And then I'll have my core. It'll be great. And he's just kind of blindly going for it. And yeah, exactly. As Baron says, the whole point of this story is that Sharon is doing something... Sharon? I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce a stupid name. Uh... <laughs> is doing something without actual purpose in order to find purpose, something I'm sure many people could 
you know, understand to some extent or another. And Charon's arc is going to be coming to grips with the fact that he needs to have something a little bit more in-depth and complex, more nuanced, than simply being stronger. And that's going to be his character arc. But anyways, if it's not obvious from the fact that I just saved, stated, and paused, we are at the cutoff point. Tomorrow, no Pokemon. Tomorrow's Sunday, right? I'm pretty sure. Yes. Okay. Tomorrow, we're going to have a lore week. A nice, long lore week. Um, good. Have a good uh, four months, Sierra Mike. I do hope it doesn't treat you too badly. Yeah, Alder didn't have a core, too. We'll get to that. But yeah, we'll have lore week tomorrow. Then we'll have some streaminations. Uh, I think that's actually it tomorrow. We shouldn't have a Star Trek stream tomorrow, by all accounts. But either way, I will see you 10 a.m. Remember, we start a little bit later. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.